Welcome back to the Nullify Take channel on YouTube, where we've got the TNT takes for you on the challenge All Stars 4. It's Easter weekend, so I hope everybody is getting ready for a great long weekend. Um, over here in Australia, it is Easter weekend. It's the same over there, right, Drew, in the US? Sometimes uh, they. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Good Friday happening Friday. So tomorrow, our time <laughs> is going to be a Good Friday. So yeah, it's definitely Easter weekend as well. Awesome. Just wanted to make sure, because sometimes they have like <laughs> these holidays on like different dates, depending on when the world you are. So it's good to know everybody's getting a bit of a long weekend. Everybody gets to relax with the family. And before you do that, you get to talk some challenge all-stars with the three of us. Um, that's right. We're all here, <laughs> myself, Kahuna, and Drew. Unfortunately, Chantel is unable to make it today. Last minute, um, she she couldn't make it. Um, and uh, I don't know why Drew's celebrating that, Drew. Very cold. Uh, I I do this thing where I uh, I do my thumbs up and then something uh, fireworks happen. I always forget it happens. It's either it gives me a thumbs up or I do double thumbs up and then like explosions happen. So it's just it's wild. I like it. I like it. You yeah, don't know the rest of the, the hacks. If you do the double things, you'll get like a laser show and there's all different things you can do. I had do. no idea. And I do it it's all a, the time and I always it's forget an about Apple, it. It's an Apple specific. Oh, okay. Right. I didn't know it was Apple specific. So mm. deal. <laughs> yeah, so unfortunately, no Chantel, everyone, but we will have Chantel in this draft. She had um, some last minute commitment that she needed to do with work, and obviously, work and life comes first. So, um, and then just with our schedules being, um, it's hard enough just to get a schedule that actually works for everybody. So, then when we lock it in and one person can't make it, it actually does make it very difficult to get everybody together. But I promise you, we will do something in the future with Chantel back on the channel and Drew on the channel as well. Most likely, it's going to be about the challenge season. 40 we haven't spoken about that cast at all yet i haven't actually dove into it much i know at a very high level how they are picking the teams and i i feel like i knew one of the cast lists that went out there but it's changed since then so i do need to um get up to speed but there's plenty of content we can still talk about um as a trial or a quadrant here on this show but for now for tonight we're gonna have the audience pick Chantel's team so there's going to be more stakes in this than ever um, and I saw somebody earlier asking who's going to be the person that will kick us off on this draft are we going to go by all-stars three result or are we going to go by season 39's result um, Drew we had a bit of a conversation about this before um, do you want to let the audience know what we're thinking uh, yeah, so if Chantel was going to be here, I originally suggested like us doing something like maybe a slide puzzle or something like performance based to see who would get to go like first, second, third. And uh, but with Chantel being gone, as well as with now there being Kahuna here, as well as the audience is going to be choosing for Chantel, it just doesn't seem right to go based off of past results for just the trio. So we're going to start off clean and fresh and just do it random. And uh, mm. I feel like in honor of Chantel not being here, but she loves to have sabotages. I feel like this random order, as well as the chat picking for her, is as much sabotage as we can handle for tonight. So I think that'll yep. uh, that'll be uh, catching us off guard. So I'm very we'll interested it. to know where the chat's priorities are going to lie tonight. Are they actually going to go and sabotage Chantel on this pick because she wasn't here and that's like payback for it? Or will they go down the competitive route? Because they've got three champions of champions on this podcast. You know, I've won uh, the last two drafts in a row, which is unheard of. I'm, I'm actually quite shocked by that. Uh, Drew has won more drafts here than anyone else. And then we've now drafted in, uh, you know, Kahuna, who's undefeated in drafts. He's done two drafts on the Nullified Tag channel for Survivor and won them back to back. Kuna, what does it feel like to finally make it here to the main stage on uh, a draft for the challenge? To be honest with you, I feel a little bit like maybe in season 40 or even battle for a new champion. I'm the, I'm the rookie coming into the champs here, the vets, and I'm going to be like saying, this is the next generation. <laughs> and take and make way. It's it's time to move on. It's the new generation of drafters coming through. Um, mm. and I feel like unlike some of these new generation of challengers, I've got a bit of history of watching you guys. I even watched the the, the preview of the car the cast from Drew like early this morning, like for the episode three. We're still missing some, so I'm, I feel like I'm missing a few <laughs> of the, the cast there. But you know, I've got insight that way. So I feel like I'm 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 ready for the I'm not team Yumba, that's for sure. I'm not team Young Buck, but you know, I'm I'm coming to the, the house. 
<laughs> you know, kind of uh, Kahuna, you remind me of because you say you won a whole bunch of drafts outside of like the challenge. You're almost like the Casey Clark or the Chris Underwood or the Michelle Fitzgerald of like you won on your original show and now you're coming into yep. the challenge and trying to like become the challenge champ too. So that's how I, yeah, that's you're, it. <laughs> you're, 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 you're known. So mm -hmm. I think that's how I see it. I feel like he should count himself lucky that he's not coming into uh, a draft where we do have a sabotage because, oh you know, normally gosh. the vets, the vets stick together, you know, and I feel like he would have, <laughs> would have been a very <laughs> difficult yeah. uh, initiation to this draft if we had some sabotage this round. I, I get I get lost in it. I'm gonna be real honest. I feel like I I've won a couple of drafts here with sabotage in it. I just don't like the sabotage. I like having my ducks in a row. I kind of like knowing like who's gonna be going where and what mm. people. But like just getting thrown somebody in your lap randomly when I'm like, wow, okay, well, I guess that's <laughs> happening. It's just, just so doesn't like production ridiculous. space. Yeah, it's so <laughs> ridiculous. I, I it always gets stuck in my head. I love it. I love it. That's why I love it is because I love seeing you freak out and not be in your comfort zone. <laughs> um, we've got Willie here saying we're going to represent Chantel. Wow. Um, also, Dolores saying hashtag protect Chantel. Um, and Lena saying glad you are here, Kahuna. Um, and then Willie says I dislike Casey, but I like Michelle and Chris. So um, at least one of the three you were there. Okay, let's have a look. Let's go. <laughs> um, we're going to start it off with the wheel. Uh, the wheel will decide. Who goes first in the draft today? Um, we've got a bunch of names here. Obviously, the audience now is included because they will be picking for Chantal. Um, and let's see where we land. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's gonna be the audience. <laughs> it is gonna be the audience. Oh, that's incredible. That, so close. that was incredible. Oh. Oh the my audience gosh. will be the first to pick, but I feel like um, what we may do here is we'll remove the audience and then see who actually goes second as well. Let's do the wheel completely. See if I can get all the audience out. All right. Who's going to be second in this draft? Uh, that got my hopes up. I was already excited. I'm like, <laughs> I'm winning the draft already. Stay, stay. Oh, Kahuna gets second spot oh, I'll take in the it. draft. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> well done, Kahuna. And it's going to be between myself and Drew for who is going to be <laughs> the last person in this draft. Cast wash, wash. They, uh, Kahuna did, did get too hype. I did get way too hype. <laughs> Got too hype. Got too hype. All right. Drew, you are going to go um, in third place. Great. So how this is going to work... Let me get the draft up here next. Oh, can we? Can you bring up the wheel again? And can you do the same thing for male and female? Could you like? Can oh, we you just go down male flip. to female? Coin flip. Can we? Yeah. Can we just do a, like a coin flip and just make that random too? Let's just go all random. Let's just okay. go all random. Jeez, um, like who? Who is this person? Like you know, suddenly you know, I thought you didn't <laughs> like sabotages, and now you're like all in on the sabotages. But let's I'll be for real. If I'm not picking first. Either way, I want. <laughs> no, you want the whole. You want the whole place to burn to if you're not picking first. As possible. <laughs> All right, let's go. I don't know what I'm. Oh, hoping. the audience gets female as uh, the first pick, so the audience is in pole position here All right. for Chantal going into the draft, and that means that we're going to go down in a snake order. Um, that female will be the first pick, which means because I'm the fourth person in the draft, I'll get the first male pick um, going into this, which uh -huh. I, I I don't know if that's what I wanted because I feel like the female cast is quite stacked coming into this season. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. So let's get the draft up here and get the order right. So we've got Chantel top. We've got Kahuna second. And then Drew third. And with myself right at the bottom so going with this uh who is everybody picking and i know, just look at them conspiring against me over there in the <laughs> live start chatting who who do you guys want to pick as your first pick for the season hmm looks like it's let's see so so far i'm seeing a lot of caras i'm seeing a little bit of Cara, laurels Laurel. popping up laurels starting to pop mm. up a little bit more Interesting. it's very 50 50 
Interesting. Do we need a pen and paper? <laughs> I think <laughs> this is gonna be tight. Like I thought it would be easier than this, but it's very tight between them. I mean, it's easy. I think it's easy for you because if you had the first pick, we all know <laughs> who you would have chosen. <laughs> Uh, like, I don't think there's any chance I get Kara any case, to be honest. Um, yeah, if we could have done, uh, I mean, yeah, if, if there was a ability to do uh, multiple polls, I would say what we would have to do what six polls for the audience. Yeah. Okay, the I'll, I'll count. I'll count the laurels. Um, you count the Kuna. You count the Karas that we've seen okay. come up. How far back? Are we... <laughs> and I'll count uh... anybody else that shows up, but nobody else is yeah. coming up. <laughs> Oh, I think somebody said Jasmine. I think I'm counting votes for Jasmine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> There's a whole bunch. Whoa. A whole bunch of them. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen about 12 laurels. I think I, you can use a website for polls. There's voter fraud in the chat. I mean, voter if fraud. we could... If you could suggest uh suggest a, a website for I'm at eleven for Kara. Woof. I think what we go with get? that twelve. Twelve. I think we go with that Laurel is gonna be the first pick off the off the bat. Oh, there's Laurel another Kara. There's another Kara. <laughs> Some of them are repeating, so I feel like it's getting into repeating out. <laughs> no repeating, everybody. It's gonna make it way too hard this draft if you keep typing. Like just do it once. We will try and count as many as we can. I do believe I Laurel is the first person being chosen at this point. Yeah, I would 35. say that. Nah, yeah. that, that can't be. There must be some. There must be some. Re re there definitely is some. Some double votes there. Um, okay, Laurel uh, in our original draft also um, went in the first round, and Laurel was in Chantel's team for the original draft, so she gets Laurel back here. Um, obviously, Laurel is someone that comes with a big reputation, Drew, into this season. What do you think of this first pick for the audience? Uh, I think it's a good one. I mean, honestly, I came into this draft. So I so I hate the skid I'm on uh, of not winning enough lately. Even though I've won a lot, I want to win more. And so I came up with an idea of two different lists of how I'm viewing this. Because normally when I'm putting up the list, I only do one list and it's like, who do I think can win the season? But that's so narrow focused because I had a Manuel for the Challenge 39 draft and he gave me literally just mm. nothing. He gave me nothing. Um, yep. So to me, Good it's point. like I have I had two lists then. It's like a dramatic list as well as who who I think can win the season. So I have two, two lists going. I'm seeing how that's going to play out. And basically, Kara and Laurel, I, I know she's not going to fall to me, um, but Kara and Laurel <laughs> were like at the at the top two of both lists. And that's just from the trailers and everything that's going on. So that's where my head was at. So I think you can't go wrong having those two uh, at the top. Yeah. Kona, how do you feel about um, Laurel going in the first spot here? And then obviously... I feel like, Drew, you kind of chose a little bit. You maybe took some notes from my draft because I had, like, all the biggest characters last season. I don't have the winner, but I won the draft, which is so bizarre mm -hmm. not to have the winner in my draft but actually winning it. But, uh, Kuna, what do you think about Laurel, first spot? I mean, I think I was I obviously had a, a top two that I was picking from, which I'm going to go with my first pick as well. But Laurel, I think, was edging Cara Maria for me um, simply because she's a sociopath competitively. She's got that, like we talk about in our other shows, we talk about Mamba mentality or, or big game mentality. She has that psycho competitive nature that kind of makes you a bit of an asshole, but it makes you really good at competitive things. Right. So that's what Laurel's got. And I've always respected her like ability to compete, even though she's not a great person sometimes. Um, and I think just the fact that she was on ride or dies, um, more recently than Cara Maria has been in and she might have a bit of ring rust on her after so, so much time off. So even though I put Cara Maria up there with her, I would have picked Laurel first. So I think it's a great pick by the mm. audience. Mm -hmm. So you've got the mic. Who's your first pick? Is it going to be the obvious person? It has to be. Like it, it's like I said, it, to me, it's almost like a 1A, 1B. Um, but Cara Maria is the GOAT female competitor for me in the challenge. Um, and if she's on the board, you have to pick her. Like, I think, yeah, it, yeah, it, hands down. First, 
first solo winner ever of the challenge. Um, most champions by a female. You know, like she's kind of she's a, she's a goat. She's a legend. She's the absolute best, and I'm happy that I've got her, even though she wasn't necessarily my first pick. I'm I'm more shocked by the audience thinking that both you were going to leave Cara Maria for me. That That's the thing that shocked me the most. Everybody's like, we have to get Cara because otherwise Chris gets her. As soon as I went last and as, as soon as I knew it was females, I knew I was going to lose Cara Maria. All I'm holding on to is we're doing two drafts. There's one draft that we did, the OG draft. Cara Maria isn't my team in that draft. And then there's this draft, which I've now lost Cara Maria. And so I'll take it as a consolation price at this stage but um, obviously everybody knows my love for Kara. she is a great competitor in my opinion the goat female competitor um and you know th there's really not that much that she needs to prove coming into this season but i know she's got a fire in her belly because she hasn't been casted for so long she has not been on the challenges sort of roadmap or even sort of you know within that sort of challenge world for so long that coming into this season and specifically being there with people who maybe she has not the greatest relationship with, like a Laurel, for instance. Seeing her Laurel, Laurel and Nicole all on the same season is going to be interesting. And I think she's also well set up from a strategic standpoint because the last time she played the game, she worked with Cam and Cam and Leroy is there. So I feel like she's got she's got a lot of friends playing this season as well. So uh, I do expect Cara Maria to have a deep run this season, Drew. Yeah, uh, it's it, no doubt in my mind. I mean, she didn't look the best on season 39's Mercenary, but that was filmed way afterwards. She's also doing puzzles. I mean, that was the season of puzzles. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you say she's coming in with not really much to prove. I actually think that's the opposite. I think she has a lot to prove, one, to herself, but also the challenge for kind of like barring her from contending for so long. She's like, oh, you don't think the challenge needs me? You don't think the, the audience will miss me? Well, I'm going to come in. I'm going to get so much camera time. I'm going to get so many confessionals. I'm going to argue with Laurel and I'm going to prove and I'm going to go into eliminations because I know she's probably going to go into elimination. It looks like there's a star system that they're going to mm. be doing of of needing to earn your way into the uh, into the season, which into the final, which is like wild to me that we didn't have that for 39, but we're having that for like seasoned competitors on all stars, which is just wild. Uh, I just think that she's going to be all over this season and there's no reason for her not to, to go far. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, so drew, you've got the mic. Who are you going for, for your first female pick of the season? All right. So here's the thing I'm coming in. I had one plan and I said this in the beginning before we, we started. I was like, I only have one goal and one plan, which I didn't tell anybody until right now. And my plan was to pick different people than what I originally picked in the trio draft. I want to hedge my bets. If I'm not going to win uh, this draft, I could win that draft. If I don't win that draft, then I could win this draft. Kind of vibe in that way. I can hang my hat. Um, really, I was thinking of that. Smart. I was thinking of that thinking I maybe I could squeak in here, pick a Kara and Laurel because I picked Cam. Um, but when we get to a certain point, it's like, all right, Laurel and Kara are off the list. Ugh, who the who who am I going to choose if it's not Cam at this point? Um, yeah. So it's like, do I go with the 29 year old Cam who is durable? She goes to the finals more like, well, she's three of she's three, three of five seasons. She goes to the finals and um yeah, she she just recently became a mom, or she wasn't in the the, the her like her competing shape Fine. as she was in like double yeah. agents and stuff. But you know she's gonna come in with a plan. You know she's gonna go into eliminations and crush it. You know she's gonna have the politics. You know she has friends. I mean, who else would I come in and get? I mean, she can start drama. She could do all of it. She's got a ton of of ideas. The only other person I was thinking of is maybe nicole you know she can compete she can go into eliminations she's physical she's gonna start the drama between cara and laurel she probably gets some make out points with laurel as well uh <laughs> do i feel good in my soul picking nicole over cam <laughs> hell no all right um and the only thing that really is barring me from picking nicole at this point is she she's 
she she DQs. She gets uh, DQ'd either if she makes a final and she stubs her, uh, not stubs her toe, that's Veronica. She's, she falls into a hole and rub, rolls her ankle or if she just like gets her arm pulled out of her socket and then she's done. To me, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Give me Cam. I have her in both drafts and I'm going to be happy with uh, having Cam if I can't have Kara or Laurel to swap it up. Yeah, um, I, I love Cam. I think Cam is a, a great competitor. Obviously, we don't know what physical state she's in coming into the game, but we also saw, um, you know, Jonay come into All Stars one, having had a baby, and then performing extremely well, um, and then the next season actually going out and and winning while well, winning back to back seasons. You know, so you never you can't underestimate the the heart of a champion. And even though Cam is not one yet. She's got that within her. It's that Mamba mentality that Kahuna spoke of earlier. Uh, she's competitive socially. She's she's a queen. She's someone that's going to run circles around a lot of players when it comes to the strategic side of the game. I do expect to see Cam go very deep this season. I think it's a very good pick. And if you didn't pick her, I would have definitely picked her next. So I think it's a good pick at this stage. Even though you have to go back to where you've gone in the other draft, Um Maybe it just it's just meant to be. Cam's meant to be in Drew's team. That's what the way I'm seeing it. Guna, thoughts on uh, Cam here being picked in the first round? Yeah, I, 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 that's the top three picks for me, regardless of whether we went females first. Like, I think like the the women are kind of outmatching the the men in this one at the moment. Um, but Cam is shouldn't really even be on All Stars. She's like main cast, main show appropriate like she's still young enough still strong enough still hasn't like achieved what she's probably going to be able to achieve if she goes back down that route so i love cam um it does hurt me to never pick cam to not pick cam first in anything that she's in like it's almost a, a, an unspoken rule for me if cam's on something i'm picking her but when you're up against laurel and and cara it's tough but third spot is definitely where she belongs for me yeah, you finally agree with lovable Nikki after many, many <laughs> podcasts. You guys are now on the same team for once, which is great to see. Okay, so I do have um, the last pick here. And similar to you, I was thinking about coming into this and mixing it up and, and potentially doing something different. But I, I can't pass on Nicole. Um, you mentioned that it was between Nicole and Cam. If you did go for Nicole, I would have gone Cam in this case. But I just think Nicole coming into the season, there's too much opportunity for me to make points with drama. I know that there are more decorated females that have not been chosen at this stage, but I'm again looking at this. If I've got someone that potentially could go deep in the game and that can give me drama points, can give me make out points, you know, when it comes to like the whole thing about the moral of it, you know, and like Angel Cake saying, I can't do it. <laughs> this is why I'm made for Survivor. I don't care. Like I want to win this it. game. <laughs> Whatever's happening, all's fair in love and war. I'm okay with Nicole. I don't condone her behavior outside of the game, but if she gets me the draft win, listen, I'm on a roll at the moment and I'm trying to maintain that. So uh, if Nicole's going to get me there, then I'm selling my soul to the devil here today and I'm choosing Nicole as my first female pick. Um, Drew, I, I, I'll get all the heat today. I'll take the heat for you, mate. Yeah, How do you feel about this pick? pick. I mean, 67% of the time, she makes it to the finals. 67% uh, of the time, She's DQing some point during the season. So, I mean, you're either going to get like the extra 10 points of making it to the final or you're going to get minus two points somewhere down the line. I mean, I will say <laughs> that it is set up for Nicole to do well if Laurel is going to be looking out for her as well as she is in good shape. She's she normally stays out of eliminations. It's going to be interesting if there is a system to where you have to earn your place for the final that she actually has to send herself into elimination because out of three seasons, she's only been to one elimination so far, yeah. which is so, interesting. I will say, Lena, Rachel was the other person. I, I actually picked Nicole over Rachel last time as well, which a lot of people are like, you did it again. I felt a lot better doing it back then because I also had Cara Maria in my draft for the other draft. So I feel like I've got a very stacked draft on the other one that, that I actually have my team. But the reason I'm not going for Rachel at this stage is nothing. It's no slide against her or her reputation. It's just she's been out of the challenge world for so long. She hasn't competed in so long. I, I just don't know if the connections are there. And I don't trust that the people that she is connected to coming into this season, uh, the Veronicas and the Tinas and those, those uh, different girls... 
I don't trust that they're going to get to the end at this stage. So I have to go with the fact that Nicole and Laurel, we know it's known that they hooked up while they were there. That's without knowing what the actual results are. There was a lot of drama about all of this that happened afterwards. So I know that something's going to happen between them. So to me, it's a calculated risk, like Drew said, of Laurel's going to do well. Maybe Nicole does well this season as well. Um, so I'd rather hit sort of get all of my eggs into one basket on the alliance that I think is going to come into this show and actually dominate, then sort of put all of it into the older school alliance that I just don't think will be able to keep up with the like I actually think Nicole could be aligned with all three of the girls above her in this draft. And if you compare them to the Tinas and the Veronicas, I think Rachel is going to be in a world of hurt when she's out there. She may be she may go in there and do a lot of eliminations and have to take out her friends this season, which would be sad to see Coda. Yeah, I mean, you finally get her back after all these years and then to be targeted uh, is is a tough position to be in. I don't I don't know if that's how it's going to play out. You're right. Like so much of the cast is known because they're on All Stars, but unknown as to what social dynamics they're going to bring to it. Some of them have been like twenty plus years that we haven't even seen them on here. Like you know what I mean? Like I had to I had to Google some of them to be honest with you. Even though I've watched all the seasons, I had to Google it. So I'm like, who knows what Rachel brings as far as I know she's still like social media wise she's got the gym and she's with everyone constantly so she's still in the world but you're right she hasn't competed in a long time for me nicole has always been one of those doesn't live meet expectations i've always felt like she's a firefighter she's got that physique i always felt like and maybe it's a little bit popcorn muscles as far as it translating to the challenge like she does get to the finals but not i haven't seen i haven't been impressed with her physically uh, whereas Rachel is definitely that. But when you're talking about social dynamics and the fact that she's going to be with Laurel, like this is pre blow up again, 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 <laughs> Nicole's in a better position. I think you're right. It's a good pick there. Yeah. Um, okay. So the next one, I think people will uh, agree with me a little bit more on this one. It's got to be Leroy, right? For the first guy pick uh, coming into the season. I feel like when we talk about, Cam should be on the main show. To me, Leroy should still be on the main show. Like, he can still hang with the new kids, I believe. And it's a shame that we've never seen Leroy get a championship as of yet, but he's made many a finals. He's extremely good at the eliminations. He's a likable guy. He's going in with Cam, who I think socially <laughs> is going to run this game, similar to the last time that both of them played. So I just see him going deep this season and looking at sort of the field when it comes to the men like i don't know if it's a one person winner the season or if it's a two people win the season one male one female i'm hoping that's what they do in all stars they've been doing it for most of the seasons or if it's a duo winning it looks like it's stars so maybe it's individual um but in any of those scenarios i kind of like my chances with leroy i think leroy's got a really good shot to go to the end and finally win and i feel like this season's been set up for him to win drew like if leroy doesn't win this season like Will he ever win a season? Like, I, I feel like this is the best season for him to go into. Yeah. I mean, I completely agree with this because as we did the trio draft, the first man pick was mine and I chose Leroy. No hesitation. I mean, the dude is yoked. He is I, one of the taller men in the house and he just, I'll be real. Everybody here is in better shape than they were when they first started on the challenge, but Leroy has taken his whole physique and everything to the next level. He's even practiced his swimming. He's put up his workouts on Instagram. He looks like he's in incredible shape. And I think he's coming in more focused than ever to, to go deep. There's no reason why he can't go deep. I mean, we talked about it. Um, and I said it, oh, I said it in the next part of the, of the player previews that I'm doing, but I I've already done Leroy and put it up on Patreon. And I mean, this is one of the least competitive men cast that he's ever had to go up against. I mean, when you look at his whole challenge career, he's had to go uh, up against um, bananas multiple times, CT multiple times, uh, Wes a couple of times, and he's beaten some of them in eliminations, but just being in a game with them is it's it, the pressure mounts on you, but he's going up against Ace and Adam and Derek, and not saying that these are terrible players, but I mean they're no, they're not they're not comparable to what he's had to go into in his twelve seasons. 
uh, prior to this season. So I just look at Leroy and I think I have the highest of hopes if he somehow stumbles at, at some point during the season, I think it's a huge missed opportunity and I would be pretty shocked and disappointed if he didn't make a deep season run slash make the final slash win, in my opinion. Karuna, thoughts on um, Leroy? Yeah, I, I can't disagree with any of that. He would have been my pick for the men as well. He, I've always felt like he deserved to, he, he's in that, like, you know how I feel about Corey, who will never yeah. win a final? Leroy was like Corey 1.0. Before Corey was Corey, there was Leroy, that he was always close he, you knew he's good, but he just never could get over the line. And a lot of that, as Drew said, is the competition around him. And when you look at this male cast, I said before we even started, I was like, I'm going to be worried about the men's side. And I don't know who's going to be able to do what here. But I do know that Leroy uh, looks like a standout um, amongst, or I mean, you know, there's a handful there maybe that are in that in that category with him. And when you look at, single like solo winner weak male cast he's got his partner there he's the most well connected like i feel like they are kind of laying it on laying it on a platter for leroy to take to at least go far in this if not take it all right um drew you're next with the next male pick like we said it is a bit of a lean field when it comes to the the men this season but are you gonna go where i think you're gonna go so luckily you did pick Leroy. So now I'm not sitting here just picking my exact same team from the trio cast because if Leroy was still there, there's no way I'm going to like bypass him at all. Yeah. Um, but you took Leroy. I think we're going to swap picks from what we did in the trio draft and I'm going to pick Brad. Um, I'll be for real. Wasn't a huge Brad fan until I was able to sit down with him uh, for an exit interview for the challenge 39 after he lost to Kylan. And, uh, one of my, if not my favorite interviews so far with a challenger, the dude is just so energetic. He is so like out of here. Like, like mm. he's, his mind does other things that you never would think of as well as he, his eyes just pierce your soul. Um, <laughs> his beard is as fluffy as a cloud. I mean, to me, I, I just I really like Brad leaving that interview and a lot of people on the Patreon have said like that that was the best interview out there because mm. it's just so fun. Um, and I'm I, and I'll be real. So I just to point this out, uh, I said that I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about the challenge and I came up with a weird statistic that I've never thought of before, but it made me think. Did everybody know that on a season where there's a previous champion on the season? Over 80% of the time, a previous champion will win the season. Wow. Over 80% of the time. And that's from yeah, going staggering. From, that's from season five all the way down to season 38. They didn't count 39 because there was no previous champions on that one. And the same thing with one through four. So more than like a more than 80% of a time, a champion wins. So if I'm taking those into a factor and looking at some of the champions that are on here. I mean, I'm willing to give give Brad a chance because one, he is a champion. Two, he got really close in All Stars three. wasn't the best showing on All Stars uh, thirty nine, but our challenge thirty nine. But that wasn't like that was way after All Stars had already filmed and was all that stuff. So I just have a good feeling that if it's either Leroy or Brad, I have to put my money on. I'm putting my money on one of those two outside of anybody else that's on here. So. That's my that's my feeling about it, and uh, I'm happy to have Brad on my team. Yeah, there's a few people here that said they thought Brad was going to fall to them um, for the next pick. But Kahuna, <laughs> where where would you have picked Brad? Like, if if he wasn't the next choice, do you reckon he would have been yours? Yeah, yeah, he would have. Like like Drew, said, I didn't know the stats on eighty percent of seasons with a champion, a champion wins, but. I know that pedigree counts for a lot and experience counts for a lot. I and see. as much as on the on the grand scheme of champions and competitors and phenomenal athletes that we've seen on this show, Brad certainly isn't cracking the Rushmore. He's not he's not knocking on the door any time of the CTs and Bananas and Jordans of the world. But on this cast and what he's done in the past, he is a strong competitor. He's always at least in that middle to top you know he's 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 in the top half generally and he's got the experience of going all the way and winning 
I like Brad a lot. I, he would have been my pick for sure after Leroy. I think he's the second one. And for the for my pick, go. I think I think it's it to me there was a top three men and and then a pretty steep drop off as far as what mm. I had no known quantities. And even when I'm picking my next guy, as far as being a known quantity, he's still very unknown as well. I'm picking Tony, uh, Tony time. He is still young enough and strong enough to be in the main show. Um, my concerns with, with Tony is his volatile personality. I'm hoping with age and, and parenthood, he's you know settled down, but he's been out for a little while. So I don't know what his relationships are like, all that sort of thing. I'm hoping he's strong, but I think of the men that those three there were my top three. And then I'm kind of uh, stumbling in the dark after this, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of people here are liking the Tony time pick from you. And um, I think if we just look, you know, we spoke about Leroy's physical ability and how in shape he is right now. Like Tony also looks jacked compared to when he was actually on the challenge. The guy is a workout machine. So when it comes to the physical stuff, we know he can do it. When it comes to the eating challenges, we know he's putting the food away. He's not getting <laughs> um, flustered by any of that. Um, and again, kind of a similar story to Leroy. Like I actually think they've got a very, you know, like he's also got the ability to win, but you know, he's just been in cast in the past where, you know, now knowing that statistic of 80% of champions winning, it's really hard when you go up against the bananas of the world and the CTs of the world and the Wests of the world. And those kind of seasons that he's played in has been sometimes stacked against them when it comes to experience. So like you said, he's an unknown quantity because, you know, he's been on a few seasons, but I feel like he's an unknown quantity in the sense that he just hasn't been in the challenge world for so long. Um, so getting him to come back again, similar to like, similar to Rachel, but Rachel, you know, obviously Chantal would say I'm an ageist. Unfortunately, when you go against people that are like 15 years younger than you or 20 years younger than you, it's, that's why I don't want to see the Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight. No one wants to see it. Give me Mike Tyson in his prime taking on Jake Paul. Don't give me bloody Mike Tyson that's in his 50s taking on a 28-year-old. Like, that to me is just not entertaining, you know? So mm -hmm. uh, I, I do think that, you know, Tony is a good pick at this point in the game for you. Uh, Drew, thoughts? Yeah, I think Tony's a really good one. I think that out of all the guys, this is the top. Mm, this is the top, I would say, four or five. I think that you could easily maybe put Kifla in the top, in my opinion, um brandon is also a good choice as well i mean we're talking about age derek is also very young as well so i mean i think tony is a good pick here i mean i don't think he's as volatile as he was because i think he gave up drinking towards the end of his challenge challenge run there as as his last couple of seasons he was going on a tear i'm actually pretty disappointed that he didn't keep coming on with the way that his trajectory was going, I mean, he had mm. he went far in Dirty Thirty, which he was still messy. But when it came to Thirty One, he kind of put that aside. He had the best season he ever had. Had like seven daily wins. Never was in a chance to go into elimination. He showed that he could be cutthroat to win by sending in Johnny Bananas, and then he made the final, got purged, and then he went to Final Reckoning, and he almost made the final. Lost to. Paulie and Natalie right before and then he went on to win champs versus stars two with CT so I mean the dude was on a tear and then all of a sudden he just wanted to be the family guy and you can't fault him for that I mean I'm sure he had a thing with his wife and they agreed that we're done we're putting this aside I can get some brand deals I'll work on my health and I'll be the dad uh, and be the family man which I think is up upstanding but it's just so like what if he just kept coming back and back and back that with him being so focused, like he comparatively was so much better. And I think that's the Tony we're getting a couple of years removed. He knows what's important. He knows what's at stake. If he were to slip up again. And I don't think, I don't think you're going to get drama points necessarily. Like you could have gotten in, but he's definitely primed to make a deep season run. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's um, have a look at the next pick here. It's going to be the people's choice. Uh, Chantal has got the next pick. So everybody, if you can tell us, yeah, the next two is actually going to be female, uh, sorry, male first, then female. So if you can all put in the comments who you would like to pick for Chantal next, please don't do it twice. It makes it hard for when we're counting. Uh, who would you like to see <laughs> as the next one? Chris with the poll, please. So meh. <laughs> can can I do it? Like I I just think the only problem with that is I don't know if I, you can cancel it and redo a poll, but let me let me double check. Let me double check that. Um, Ooh, this is getting can... this is kind of all over the place right now. Is it? Yeah, it's all over the place. We have one Adam Kefla, Kefla, Kefla. Okay, now we're getting some Keflas. Keflas, yeah. Brandon's got a few. Come on, guys. So Kefla, Brandon. Who, who else is coming up? Who can I get a Steve? Let me get see Steve in the chat. Anybody, Steve? <laughs> I've got one Adam, so I'm going to put Adam in there as well. So let's go, Kefla, Brandon, or Adam. I'm going to start a poll for this That's one. I'm going to see if we. That's good. Yeah, I'm going to see if we can if we can end the poll and do another one. But because normally YouTube doesn't allow for us to do multiple polls, but mm -hmm. if it works, that'll be amazing because they always update things in the back end. So let's see where the polls go. We've got eight votes in so far. Ten votes. Kefla at sixty percent. Uh, Kefla is still staying at 60% with 14 votes in, um, 15 votes in. We've got 70 people in the live, so let's get as many people hitting that vote button as we can. Uh, so, uh, so far, I do want to just mention that so far, this is going pretty standard, I would say. Mm. I think that uh, looking at our trio draft that I have up right next to us, um, it's pretty much going exactly the same, except for that we have an extra person in the chat doing it. I mean, it's pretty much exactly the same. We're probably going to get some mix up here uh, mm. with the chat the in round. here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's going ex almost exactly the same. Okay, I'm ending, I'm ending the poll very soon. So if you want to get your vote in, get it in. We've got 19 votes. I'm going to end it there at 53%. Kefla is wow. going to be the the next person chosen for Chantel. Um Kefla's from a different era, Drew, an era that I didn't really uh watch all that much. I'm a bit of a newer school fan of the challenge. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about his pedigree and why the chat sees him as this big um sort of get for Chantel so early on in the draft. Uh Kefla is an OG uh of an OG. If we're talking about Mark Long being an OG, I would say Kefla is up there with the with the godfather i mean he was only on one season technically on season two real world versus road rules where he won with his road rules team um and then he made a cameo the very next season on the challenge 2000 during one episode i think it was episode four and uh he was there to hype up the yes and veronica's road rules team to get them a victory which they did um he was he's very personable back in his season two He's uh, he was able to his most notable uh, was playing uh, a basketball game against Reggie Miller and Kobe Bryant with some of the other cast members. And he was guarding Kobe Bryant and then he made a three over Reggie Miller, which was awesome. Um, but he had some <laughs> really great confessionals. Honestly, I was rewatching season two uh, recently when doing the player previews and it was it was it, he was fun. He was very fun. Now we're talking about a different time and era where they back then there were no eliminations back then they were doing like steal the teddy bear from other players, flag football competitions, bed races and everything. So, I mean, it's, he's coming into a completely different game. Um, really hasn't played. There's not really a ton of crossover between Keefla and every, anybody else on this cast, except for maybe Veronica who she was on one season and they had that cameo on the, the challenge 2000. But Looking at the trailer, Kifla looks huge. I mean, he looks like he could toss anybody, especially the men on this cast, around the arena. And I think that's where the interesting part of picking Kifla early is, is that seeing him, it well, it looks like him in the trailer, where it looks like there's a giant rope, and some he's just picking some dude up from the head to his back end and, like, lifting him off the rope. Uh, I think it's a great... I think it's a great call. I think he's going to be fun. I think he's going to bring some old school vibes. I think he's going to be himself more than a lot of the other newer cast members that have played recently on the challenge, like trying to hype it up for the camera. And um, I think it's a really good pick. I would have picked him easily if he would have fell to me.
Mm -hmm. Kahuna, did you have anything to add? I know you watched some of the earlier seasons as well. Did you come in um, high on Kefla? I had zero. He was one of the ones I did not like one season, like one for one is great. But yeah, no, I, I watched the season, but to have him stand out in memory this many years on, because I'm nearly as old as he is and the memory starting to go. as well. So um, <laughs> no, I don't remember Kefla, but it, obviously when I heard that he was on the, on the cast and watching your draft last year, I did look it up yeah. again. And yeah, again, 80% of champions, like 80% of seasons with a champion and won by a champion, and he's a champion technically. So, you know, like I always, I always I always, respect that pedigree. So he's definitely got a, a shot. Yeah. Richard uh, from South Africa, my co-host for Survivor South Africa, says this will be my first All-Star season. Obviously a newer fan of the challenge as well. So I hope you enjoy it. The All-Star seasons are always a lot of fun. Um, like we said, it's a different era and a different sort of generation of challenges that come in and have fun with that. Uh, Chris, I did see it in my DMs, but I think I'm going to stick to the poll on YouTube because I've realized that I can recreate them on YouTube. And I think it's just easier to manage for everybody that are actually on YouTube. They can just click on whoever they want next. So can you give me um, some, everybody in the audience, who do you want to vote on the next one? You can have up to four people. Who are the four people you want to vote between? Like, give me some names that you want to vote for in the next female. <laughs> As we're waiting for some names to pop up, Kifla, I just want to throw this out there. Huge bump up from the trio draft from like a year and a half ago or a year and some odd months ago. Uh, I was able to pick him with my last male pick. And uh, here he is being chosen fourth overall by the men's side. So wow. huge, huge bump up uh, for Kifla. Uh, I was hoping to be able to steal him in the draft again. Uh, definitely was not going to going to get away from that. Maybe if, Maybe if Chantel was here, I would have been able yeah. to steal steal him away. But oh, shots fired at uh, Chantel. Are you thinking that Chantel would have overlooked Kefla? I mean, maybe. <laughs> I mean, you never know. Maybe she would have thought like the age, Not the audience, with Derek though. or Brandon. Maybe. I think yeah. Global Nikki's in there, the biggest Kefla fan. I feel like if she has multiple Google accounts and I I Gmail accounts, that she she logged into all of them to vote for Kefla in the last round. So. <laughs> We have got a poll up. It's between Avery, Janelle, Ayana, and Rachel at the moment. And, um, you know, the audience gave me a lot of flack for not picking Rachel as my first female pick. Do you guys think that Rachel is slam dunking it right now in the polls? Is she leading in your in your estimations? She, yeah. I just, wanna, I just want to point out the audience does not back Rachel. <laughs> They're backing Janelle at this point. <laughs> I ah, okay. So Janelle's at 44%. Rachel is sitting at 32%. So I just want to point out, because this is the first time where I can now see what the audience mm. truly think, mm. you know? Um, I was getting a lot of heat my way, Drew, about my first pick. but even Yeah, the now they're not even backing themselves up. They're not backing Rachel. What's going on here? Well, they wanted you to have her. They don't want her. They ah. wanted you to have her. So you should have <laughs> chosen her, so that way you would have had her. <laughs> I feel bitter about my pick is what I'm trying to say. So um, <laughs> we've got 23 votes and 39% are sitting on Janelle. Um, and Avery's got 26. Rachel's got 26. And Ayana is coming in at 9%. I'm going to end the poll at that. And we are going to go with um, Janelle as wow. the next pick here for um, Chantal, which is a, a big reaction there from you, Drew. I know. I, I, I like Janelle. I think she was on my team. Yeah, I picked her the second with my second women's pick on the trio draft. I like Janelle. Um, I'm actually I'm super surprised that she was even rumored slash like confirmed for this season after what happened yeah. with All Stars 2. Um, she was very emotional on the Challenge Mania podcast after the just the crap mess that happened on during that final and she was very vocal about how upset and devastated and how much she was hurt by it that i'm 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 surprised but very optimistic that she decided to get back on the horse and try to do go far on this season like she did on all stars too and try to get that win that i think she feels like her and Darrell deserved that they were uh, towards the 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 second phase of that final they were there they they had all the stuff and if they would have had the fourth step there was a good, a good likelihood that it could have been a foot race or Darrell and Janelle could have won so um I think Janelle is 
a good competitor and I would I'm rooting for her. I hope to see her go far on this season. And um yeah, I picked her I picked her high in the last draft that we did. So I mean I'm I'm totally behind Janelle. I it, to me it was it was pretty much Janelle was in the running on the women's side for me. Yeah. Um I think the only thing with Janelle obviously is we don't know how I think it was her back that she had issues with in the previous season when mm. she was running and, mm -hmm. and nearly got her pulled out of the game. I've got mad respect for the fact that she yeah. still went to run that final and still did extremely well. But again, hopefully she doesn't have like any niggling injuries or something like that that would sort of cut her time short being out there. Um, she wasn't really, I don't remember her being like the most um, entertaining when it came to like confessionals and things like that. I, I don't think the camera followed her a lot that season. Most of the drama came towards the end when uh, Darrell was like fearful that she was going to pull out of the game and we saw a bit more of her at that point. But I don't know if she's going to get the confessional points or the drama points like we would like to see it. So I feel like personally, um, she's picked too high here. Like uh, Drew's being very, very nice. I feel like there is a few people still on the board that could bring more drama, could give more points to the draft and i don't think she's winning the season so i feel like at this point i i'll be bold enough to say i feel like the winners already selected all the winners um i really feel like our first picks there there's winners and and the men and the female there so at this point we're really picking for points aren't we kahuna so um mm. you know but it's okay it's the first time the audience is taking part in this one or maybe they just wanted to sabotage chantelle here kahuna I, I hope they're not intentionally saying that, but I, I liked Jenna as well, especially on her performance on Elsa's too. And if she was on a redemption arc, like I didn't mind that pick either. Um, but I was also worried that, yeah, she had that big injury and she was such in a bad place about the challenge in general. I was like, I was very surprised to see her on the list. Um, so I'm hoping that means she goes well, but I don't know. I'm again, I, I I think the top, like you said, the, the winners picked the top eight to ten or whatever is kind of stacked, and then outside of that, I'm I'm fumbling. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, but I do think that the next pick for me is is pretty easy because of the that they picked Janelle. Um, a couple of people have already said it in the chat that Rachel falls to me, and I will take that. Um, there was the discussion whether she goes over Nicole at, at pick number four. Um, so. I'm happy to have her at pick six for the women. She, yeah, yeah, she is a legit legend. It's been a long time, but she has certainly kept up physically. Um, if age is an issue, I don't think it's going to be as much of an issue for someone like Rachel versus other people potentially. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I say age, but she's 41 years old. There's there's been challenges that have come back that have been in those 40 sort of early 40s that are still winning championships and things like that. So definitely not out of the realm of possibility. And I don't doubt her credentials. She's a two-time winner. She's been to the finals three times. Um, again, played in a bit of a different era from memory, not where like she wasn't necessarily in eliminations all of the time from memory. But you know, again, I'm not worried about Rachel. I'm more worried about the people she's going to be aligned with. And I think that that mm. is going to weaken her in the game and is going to like, but where you could maybe get her um, giving you some really good points here, Kahuna, this season is that if she does end up going into eliminations and she, if she gets thrown in there with yeah. Tina and Veronica and her friends, which could very possibly happen she's taking them all out like she's going to win some eliminations for you which will definitely give you points so i i don't hate this pick especially at this point i think it's a it's a pretty obvious choice right now drew yeah i mean i was hoping maybe somehow i would be able to choose my fellow usf bull but uh oh, yeah sorry. Rachel's, <laughs> rachel's really strong right uh, i've done her workouts uh they nearly killed me multiple times and um I, I do think that she's coming in. I know that she hasn't been in for quite a while, but you know how competitive she is. You know how in shape she is. And she's coming in with a built-in alliance of the Mean Girls Alliance. I, we, we don't know how how well-connected she stayed in contact with Veronica and Tina over the years, but just getting back into the challenge like realm, you kind of revert back to some of your like tendencies, I think. I We saw that in All-Stars 1 with Katie and Trishel yelling at each other and kind of getting paranoid all, all like right away. And yeah. it was like, yeah, you just get transported back. So it wouldn't surprise me if like, even if they hadn't talked in quite a while, just Veronica, Tina and Rachel just automatically become the click that they were back in the day and they are they become thick as thieves. So, I mean, I, I think it's a really good pick. I don't know how much... 
I'll be honest, I don't know how much drama you're going to get from Rachel, but it's a really solid pick to to know that she could most likely go deep into a season. I will say, fun fact uh, that I learned about Rachel when doing the, the player previews and for a future episode is that Rachel makes it to a final on seasons she's never seen an elimination. If she sees an elimination, uh... she normally, at least at some point, goes home or gets voted off because sometimes she was on seasons that uh, you don't get voted off. Now, she is something um, I could have known before, Drew. But she is a really <laughs> strong competitor, so I mean, you don't know how well that 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 goes into yeah. it. But it was just so interesting that every time she made it to a final, it was like clear. It was just a clear slate. She had like a pretty easy run. Either she was winning a whole bunch of dailies, or she was just well established socially that she didn't have to go in, but. Yeah, I th- I, I, it'll be very interesting to see how her game goes. It's interesting. You look back at who she lost against um, in elimination. She's lost two eliminations. One was against Kellyanne and Robin. Kellyanne, obviously, uh, a very fierce competitor. Robin, I can't remember much of. But then the other person uh, that she lost against was Anissa. And this was when Anissa was sort of in her hmm. prime. And Anissa was known as an elimination queen back then. So it's it's not like it's a bad. Yep. Go ahead. She was paired up with Anissa. Oh, was she paired up with Anissa? Yeah, she lost to uh, Paula and Dunbar in X's, and they were paired up together. They had to do the banded together, which is just like impossible for uh, Anissa and Rachel to do against pa- uh, Paula and Dunbar, just by the sure logic of that elimination. But yeah, it's 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 crazy that I was surprised that her elimination record, she has a losing elimination record. But again, she mm. hasn't had to go into a ton of them because of uh, when she started playing and all this other stuff. So it's just, it's just, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. My, my theory is still, if she's going into eliminations, which I think she is this season, she's going to get thrown in against her allies and she is going to mop the floor with them. Like, I really think mm. there's some easy points here um, on, on the table for Kahuna. Okay. Going into your next pick here, uh, Drew, who, who's the next female pick? This is this is a tough one because like with four people, it's it, I I realize that people are flying off this 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 table like it is going so much quicker than being like oh I got eight picks this is yeah, gonna be easy so, yeah it's like I'm holding cards with people's names on them and I'm like holding only like a handful now as I put the other ones aside it's kind of wild uh, so now I'm like thinking if I do, if I mess up on this. There's no way like my other two or three what by the time it comes back, I will get yeah. that, that person again, most likely. Um, looking at who I chose last time, I mean, we did have some uh 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 some sabotage picks in there, so kind of just throwing that out there. Um, <laughs> it's between two people, somebody who was a part of the Mean Girls Alliance, and then somebody who I'd be picking for age. <sighs> uh you know what? I'm gonna go. See, this is the thing. The person in the Mean Girls Alliance would get me drama points. I know 100% sure of. The other person is a huge wild card and risk that I don't have. You know what? I'm just going to go with the young young buck, and there's been some questionable things of uh, rumors out there that there might be some drama out there. I'm going to pick Avery, and uh, I'm going to go with the, the two-season wonder, barely two-season wonder, because uh, her second season, she got dq'd for leroy having a pinch nerve in his back um avery is coming in after not being on this challenge for quite some time she's only been on x's two and then uh rivals three she was paired up with leroy didn't go very far at all she won a couple of eliminations went the distance against naya who did great in all stars three she's a huge wild card she is young and there's some rumors floating around that maybe she would be able to get me some extra points on this season. Um, so I'm just going to go with age, uh, before anything else, pick the wild card. Hope she can go far. Hope she can come in still as athletic as ever. She looks to be in great shape and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's what I'll do. Oh, uh, listen, I don't think it's, a. Uh... That's an overly bad choice here. She's she's in shape. Um, I don't know how connected she still is, she is with everybody. Uh, I believe her and Leroy were mm. pretty close at one point. Um, so maybe there's like a connection there. Uh, and if she does have that connection with Leroy, hopefully that lets her into that sort of, I think people that will work together is going to be like, everybody's going to be surprised. But I, I think a lot of the, the ladies in that first sort of row that we have, I just have a feeling 
there is potential connections there that will work together. Even Cara Maria and Laurel, even though they don't like each other, they're going to say, listen, it's better for us to stick together than be thrown in together against each other. Let's work together and try and get to the end. I think what we see a lot in the challenges is that threats, they they tend to stick together the challenge and go to the end as long as they sort of can keep that. But because you don't want the Mean Girl Alliance to take over. And I feel like Avery, if she's kind of in the middle, she could float in between and potentially work with that side. Um, it's, it's a lot of hypotheticals. I get where you're coming from in regards to this. I don't know how she will do because if she doesn't get deep, because I don't know how entertaining she's going to be. Yeah. There's been some moments. There's been some moments, I guess, with her, but I don't, I don't know. Like There are still others up there that could get you points in a different way that you may have passed on at this point. I may pick one of them next. But um, yeah, Kahuna, thoughts on Avery? There's not a lot to go off here like as to what could guide your thought process and, and make any kind of real predictions around it. Like everything that was said is true. Like she's still young. She's still very fit but she doesn't have a lot of history on the show to go off as far as competitiveness, but also even like you said, connections wise, like people have said in the chat that she's friends with a few, few people, Derek. So maybe she can get in there, but I'm hoping that maybe if looking around the, the, the playground and you're doing your, your assessments when you get on the show, obviously there's going to be the, the social and the previous connections. But if you're looking around and going, Hey, she might be actually really good to have in our group. You know what I mean? Like to help you mm -hmm. win the dailies and all that, like get the young fit person that doesn't have connections and bring them in. Like I'm hoping maybe that might be a, a good in for her. Yeah. Um, okay. You, you, Andrew, you sound like you wanted to say something else. I was just going to say, this is one of the first times I can remember that I have like instant regret. I may not <laughs> regret it later down the line, but for some reason I'm like looking at who's left and I'm like, man, maybe I should have. So I just, yeah. yeah Cause, cause you, you were talking about you're choosing people this season that won't necessarily win the show, but are going to get you points. And then I feel like you may have fallen into a trap on this one because it's kind of like, it. yeah, like physically I can see where you're coming from. I don't know like if the points are going to, if it's going to be there, if she gets taken out early, but for this next one, I'm just going to play it safe and I'm going to go for the points and I'm going to take Tina off the board yeah. here as the next one. So I know that the chat would, they were between Ayana and Tina for their next pick. Um, the reason I'm going for Tina rather than Ayana is because I just think Tina has connections, even though those connections potentially could count against her. And it could be the fact that she might go have to go up against Rachel and Veronica in eliminations. For however long Tina is going to be on our screen, the producers love her. They give her a lot of confessionals. She's great when it comes to the camera. I expect her to earn me some good points before she finally gets eliminated in the game. And I will say, I remember very much the first time she came back. I think it was All Stars 2 was the first season she came back in. I had no idea who Tina was because I never watched the earlier seasons. And I was... Back then, I was like low on it. I was like, why would I pick her? Like, you know, she's not going to be able to compete. And then Chantel, I think, chose her very high. And immediately afterwards, I could understand. When she got onto the show and we saw what she brought from an entertainment perspective, she's unrivaled. So I have to go for the points here. I'm taking Tina off the board. Uh, Drew, thoughts? You seem like you're agreeing with this. Yeah, I mean, it was between Avery and Tina, and the only thing that, like, swayed me at the last second to pick Avery was how Tina's last All-Star season finished off was that you're questioning just how durable is she if she got a broken arm and had to be medically DQ'd. Not saying that just because somebody has an injury once on the season, like, on a season, that that's going to happen, but I, 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 it was between Avery being young and maybe finding a way into like Leroy's alliance, Leroy and Cam's alliance, and maybe going deep and everything compared to Tina, who, I mean, you never know what she could do. I mean, she's going to bring you entertainment. She's going to have one liner. She's going to have confessionals. There's no doubt about it. She can start some drama. You just don't know how much that could put a target on her. And then her gets sent in. Now she has a great elimination record, which I was actually quite surprised at when I was doing my research. So I think it's a really I think she's a really great pick for you here. And um, yeah, that that's who I was going in between, between Tina and Avery. And I, I went left and then you went right. So, I mean, I don't know how it's all going to turn out, but hey, if she decides that she's just going to punch, try to punch somebody in the first two episodes, then hey, maybe I made the right pick. Uh, <laughs> but then again, Tina could be showing up with the Mean Girls Alliance and take this show by storm. And that wouldn't surprise me.
Yeah, well, I got to hedge my bets a little bit here. <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've, been, I've been going against the Mean Girls lines quite a bit, but I mean, I have to have someone in that. Um, Danik has asked, do we know if the game is going to be pairs, teams, or individuals? Um, I believe, Drew, they someone in the live said that they already mentioned it in the trailer. Did they mention it in the trailer? Because I don't actually know if it's pairs, duos, or individual. I may have they... missed it. I don't think they I don't think they mentioned it in the trailers, but I think there was a press release when they uh, uh, announced the cast. And I think they announced it there. Uh, if if um, Kuna has uh, more to say about uh, Tina pick here, I can look it up and just see what. Yeah, have a look. If it's not if it's not public knowledge, because I don't actually know, then I don't think we should be spoiling if, if we know the the theme. But if it's public knowledge, then we could probably share it here. Kuna, uh, Kuna what do you think of the Tina pick here? <clears throat> I I think one of the things that I'm really struggling with with this draft coming from Survivor base where you mm. do and where generally in US Survivor especially we don't have the background of knowing these people for years sometimes decades right it's all fresh picks so you're going for who do I think can win and mm. for me the mental shift of going for points is a really difficult like transition here that I'm I'm, I'm currently struggling with because Tina I was like, I didn't have her picked high, but everything you say about, yeah, it's going to be points and all that sort of thing. She's not going to win, so you might as well go for the drama and the entertainment. I'm like, fuck, it makes so much sense. Now I'm like my whole draft strategy. I'm like, she's not going anywhere. I'm not picking her, but it makes so much sense. She's as yeah. far as value for value for, you know, bang for buck goes, value goes. Like, there's a lot of points coming out of someone that's not going to be able to physically compete. Yeah. Um, my only consolation is. I do take the theory that even though you're going to get a lot of points in a short amount of time, how long it like you have to be on the show long enough to risk. keep getting the confessionals. You know what I mean? Like you mm -hmm. might get a lot in three episodes, but if you're not there for 12 episodes or is this 12 episode season? Like, you know what I mean? Like the longer yeah, you're there, the more chance you get for points is always yeah. the consolation I'm taking. So I found on Paramount Press, uh, Paramount Plus's own uh, website of the of the cast reveal and everything. Uh, it says on the fourth season of the Challenge All Stars, old school legends, modern power players, redemption seekers, and ex lovers reunite in Cape Town, South Africa, to Let's compete go. for for three hundred thousand dollars. In this game, anyone can win. Relationships matter, and only one All Star will claim the title champion. Mm. It Only makes it tough. One. It makes it very tough. I don't like the seasons where they have one winner. I like the male female winners because I always Agreed. feel like, um, well, if you look at history, it's just females very rarely beat out the men if it's you know only one winner. Like Cara Maria is the only one who's got a standalone championship that have actually been able to do it. So um, by that alone, but then again, the men this season, outside of I feel like. I guess th there's a chance with Leroy, Brad, Tony, um, Keith Love. There's a couple of competitors there, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I like the one winner thing. I, I don't know how I feel about that. But as we um, talk about you this, know I, have I just realized when you said that, it yeah. freaked me out a little bit. Because I'm like, the fact that this was done and filmed and finished before Battle for a New Champion, and they went with the single champion format again, means that it worked. Like... Mm. And I'm Possible. like, does that mean a female maybe won it again, like the Cara Maria originally? Because I still blame the fact that Cara won it, that they keep doing it ever again, because it worked for the viewers. They're like, oh, see, a female can win. Let's roll it out again, kind of thing. So or, I'm wondering, like, you know. Hmm. Or there, it was always in the mindset that Challenge 40 was going to have 140 competitors, meaning 40 appearance fees, meaning you got to shell out more money for the OGs that right. aren't rarely coming back. So I wonder if because $300,000 is the lowest the show All-Stars has ever had, even with mm -hmm. All-Stars 2, where there was two winners, but they had to split $500,000. Each person only got $250,000. So now they're like $300,000, the most, but it's not the most, but like, less. Yeah. it's a little bit more, but it's only one winner. So I almost feel like mm -hmm. they're really trying to cut down on the winners yeah. and the, how much money they're paying out because they knew challenge 40, they wanted to go bigger than ever. And they knew they were going to have to pay. Like they're going to pay a third of the, this prize money for this season just to get CT on the cast. And the same thing with, I mean, I think they're paying 
the prize money of this to get CT bananas and probably Mark Long to be on the mm. cast. And that's and that's just them and their appearance fees for a hundred like a hundred thousand dollars each. And so I mean that's three hundred thousand dollars that they're spending for only three players on challenge forty when they still have to give out a decently si- size uh, size of uh, oh my gosh, I can't freaking talk. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, Anyways, I know what you mean. They should have shaved the by another hundred thousand so we could get the ginger out there. You know, Wes, Wes Bergman. Yeah. You know, if they if they maybe had like another hundred thousand up their sleeve, he would have come out of retirement to do season forty. But um, okay, not enough about season forty. Let's talk about this next pick. I've got the next male pick, and I'm going to give the people what they want. I'm sticking with Jay, my best choice of the original draft that I made. Um, I I know people don't see it, but I do think Jay coming into the season is a bit of a sleeper pick. People are gonna by the end of the season, they're gonna eat their words on Jay um, as he finally finishes the eating challenge in the finale of all stars four because this guy has been told he's a quitter his whole life he's got a chip on his shoulder he knows the challenge fandom doesn't necessarily like how he went out in that first season that he played and he stayed in shape he's 36 years old he's in his prime um coming into this season i just think similar to avery if you're looking at that pick that potentially i've I've got a couple of drama points now already um with both the women that i picked here um, the men, I feel like physically are up there, potentially could do extremely well. He's only played once and he made a final in his first time. Yes, they saw him as a layup. Yes, he ended up proving them right when he got to the final. <laughs> but I think, I think that is the reason why Jay is going to come into this season. I like people with a chip on their shoulder. I like people who want to prove others wrong. And I think that is the kind of energy that Jay is going to come into the season with. And if you just stalk his Instagram and you look at his workouts, Guy's an absolute machine, Kahuna. Um, thoughts on Jay? He's a firefighter as well, isn't he? Like, and yeah. and that's the he kind needs of... to be with the amount of fire that the fans keep bringing at him. Like he just <laughs> really put them out, you know. Like I don't, I don't think it's a horrible pick. Again, like physically, anyone who's a firefighter seems to be quite physically adaptable to what the challenge the resident. There seems to be the same kind of physiological demands on the body you know what i mean like I, I think that translates well i don't know what connections he has in the game if any like you said he was on one season and was kind of two yep and he was just jenna's jenna's ex you know what i mean and like who did he hook up with in that season he was he was with J- uh, janae he was with janae that season but yeah like I, I don't know he's just one of those i don't think he's going to be anywhere near the bottom because he's not enough of a irritant to get people like he's not a threat he's not going to annoy anyone he's not going to be putting people like offside i think he'll be a number in the middle and can float pretty easily so i think he's he's gonna be there for a while but he's not going to make any massive waves for me drew yeah i i was hoping that you would go a little bit different so maybe i could have chosen jay this round um uh, but you got him in both drafts i i think Jay is interesting. Um, I did come across a a Facebook post uh, that Jay wrote about quitting the final and how that was the the best thing that ever happened to him because he said he vowed that that would be the last thing he ever quit. That even if things get ha- ta- uh, hard, oh, he just likes that, he was, that kind of thing. That he was He's going to now. <laughs> use that as motivation to get through all the hard times and everything. So. I, I once I read that and and then uh, he said he was like he prays for the time that he would possibly get another chance to do the challenge and like to prove himself and prove everybody that he deserves to to be there and everything. And then when the All Stars was kind of getting announced and everything, and it came up as a memory for his Facebook, he like reposted it and said, "Well, well, well." Um, so I think that made me feel like I'm kind of excited and want to root for him. So coming into this draft, I was hoping that maybe he would have he would have fallen to me in this in this case scenario. But I think it's a good a decent pick. Now there's still a huge amount of question marks, you know, a, yeah. around him. Never seen a, an elimination. Only won one uh, a daily challenge. Really hasn't had that much experience. But he is a firefighter, and like you were saying with Avery, you don't know where he lies with anybody, and so that could be a huge opening for him, or it could be a huge easy target to be like, I'm not ruffling any feathers by throwing in Jay. Who could look like 
one of the smaller guys on the cast to throw him into a, the first elimination or the second elimination and see what he can do kind of like that. So, um, mm. but it'll be interesting to see what he can do. You know, I believe you have to risk it to win the biscuit at the end of the day, Drew. So uh, this is what I'm doing with this pick and um, we'll see how it plays out at the end of the season. Both of us taking risky picks um, in the last three picks here. Um, who do you have as your next guy, Drew? All right, now you now you're throwing risking it for the biscuit and all that stuff at me that I'm like, oh man, do I do I try to risk it here? I don't think I will. I think I'm just gonna fall back into my my old my old uh, uh my old ways of what I did with the trio draft. Uh, this person has fallen to me. I took them with my second man pick, and uh, this person has fallen all the way down t- to to my spot right here. And I'm gonna say right. Brandon. Yeah, I'm just going to pick Brandon. I think Brandon is young. Um, I'm super excited to see him back. I mean, he's good friends with Leroy. He uh, His first season was Fresh Meat 2 alongside Laurel and Kara. I feel like he's going to jump right into a Fresh Meat 2 alliance with them. And I, I know that he hasn't lasted too long on any given season that he's played on but he's been itching to come back i'm i'm excited to see what he's gonna do and i'm hoping that him leroy cam cara and laurel can just like be a powerhouse moving through this game so um it's hard not to have chosen brandon given who's left on the men's side i mean here's here's another thing though i do want to point this out and i think it's quite easy to to tell but during the cast reveal we all could tell that there was 25 players announced which is odd, an odd number, 13 men and 12 women. So that uh. makes, so there is a complete, there's, there's somebody in here that's most likely going to flop. Somebody is most likely going to be leaving the game early. And it's kind of like pl- trying to play the, I don't want that person gone. And so mm. it's a, it's a risk. It's like playing minesweeper with these guys, not just because, there's a huge amount of question marks and redemption arcs and everything, but there's a question mark of like, am I picking a person that could possibly be leaving the game early? My only thought process is that it happens early enough in the game that they were like, we have to put who the alternate was Cyrus. So it's like, we have to put Cyrus and we have to put out his cast photo early because he's going to be in all the trailers early enough and everything. So we have to throw him in. So I'm, I'm expecting it to happen earlier on in the season rather than later. Mm. That's why they announced him and threw him out there. So I just want to throw that out there. I think Brandon, as long as he doesn't have a PBR before an elimination, I think it'll be fine. You know, I feel like he could be good. So hopefully he, he will be good. And yeah, just taking a look at everybody else on here. It's hard not to pick Brandon when he's like staring at me along with the other players that are there. And you're just like, yeah, I, I, how yeah. can I not pick him? Yeah, uh, listen, I think it's a it's a good place to pick him. I know you were tempted by picking Ace probably in this spot as well, but Brandon definitely the the safer choice if you're not going to go for the the risk it for the biscuit um, choice here. Uh, obviously, close to Cara Maria as well, like a few people have said, um, has gone home early quite a lot in his challenge career, but. You know, just I don't know why, but one of the things I resonate with when it comes to Brandon is his heart. Like he just goes all out. Like, and you can't help but love the underdog battler kind of story that he has. And if he can come into this season with that same kind of energy, um, maybe he can, you know, upset a few, like you know, upset a few bookie odds here early on. Because, like we said, this is a, a men's sort of draft or a cast list that isn't as stacked as we've seen sometimes in the past. So um, all up, he's done seven eliminations, three wins, four losses, very 50-50. But I'm excited to see Brandon come back. I'm with you on that, Drew. I I really hope he has a good season this time around. Um, Fresh Meats 2 was kind of the the furthest back I went the first time I started watching. I had a really strange challenge arc where I started on Final Reckoning, then went back to Fresh Meats 2, watched it until the later season before I went back and watched some of the earlier seasons. So um, in a lot of ways, Fresh Meats 2 was like the first season I really, really watched um, as well when it came to the older seasons or the mid-school season. So uh, love seeing Brandon come back. Uh, Kuna, what's your thoughts on Brandon? I have a really weird thing with Brandon in that um, he was always one of those guys that I liked, but I was like, oh man, he sucks. Like, I was like, I I like it. I want you to do really good, especially at the time when I was watching it. And 
when diversity on the challenge wasn't as strong as it, it probably is today, I remember really getting behind Brandon and I was like, I like this guy. He seems cool. He's chill. He's not as much of a douchebag as some of these other guys on there. And then he just kind of always sucked. And I was like, oh man. Like, so I, I, I've always had him in a spot where I just never respected him as a player because I just never saw it. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I he does have heart for sure. And that was almost made it worse for me. Like, mm. I must have been in such an asshole phase at the time, but I'm like, this guy does try really hard, and he still sucks. <laughs> so what do you mean? Like, what do you mean an asshole phase, Kahuna? You're still in that. Phase yeah, I'm right still now. in it. You can't, you can't call it a phase if you're still an asshole. <laughs> yeah, I lost level Nikki after like five minutes today. <laughs> I, I got her inside, and she's like gone again. Um, <laughs> but you know, yeah, Brandon. I, I feel like I hope he. This is the redemption thing because I always felt he had more than what he ever showed us. Um, and unfortunately, that put him in a spot for me where I, I never ranked him that high. Um, but in a middling cast like this of men, he does kind of have a sp uh, have an opportunity here, especially if the top top ranked guys maybe target each other and some of these middling guys that can either sneak by as not a threat um, can band together and, and focus on the like. Really, that should be the meta strategy for every season on the challenge, right? Instead of the vacation alliance, you should be focusing on. Let's get the people that are going to destroy us in the finals. Jordan should never see a final. CT should never see a final. Um, and with that strategy in mind, maybe Brandon can go far because he's not one of those people that are threatening like um, in this one, like a Leroy or a Brad potentially. So that could be good for him. You've got the mic, Kuna. Um, Who's your next male pick? I don't even know you. I I'm really doubting myself because I don't know if you were joking or not, and I'm, I'm really kind of... When you said Drew was either going to choose between Jay and, and Ace, and I'm no, like, I was serious. Oh, Ace was Ace was definitely like, up for consideration. Yeah, because Ace was going to be a pick for me. But then I look in the comments, and everyone's like, Ace is definitely the one going home early. Ace, Ace is, the chat's trying to uh, sabotage you, mate. I'm the like, chat's oh trying to no. You. Like, I'll Ace listen was to the chat. Be my pick. I yeah. think Ace like, was look, look at look at the chat. They didn't even want me to pick Jay, and um, they try to get me to pick Rachel when they didn't believe in Rachel. So look, Dolores, I would not look, trust. I would not trust the chat at all on this one, Kahuna. Yeah, is this what is going on here? Like, is that yeah. like yeah. reverse psychology? Dolores is Dolores is kind. She's the rest of them. I don't know about, but Dolores is kind. She would never. <laughs> she would never put you in the wrong direction. Oh my gosh! See, Ace. I don't remember a lot of. Uh, original thing, but obviously on All Stars, he had one elimination, and I can't hold that against him because I'm like, he went into a hall brawl against Latarian, like, mm. you know, not a hall brawl, a uh, pole wrestle. Yeah, I but Latarian, did like, you see the arms on Latarian, mate? Like, yeah, I'm know, like, I'm, I'm not going to hold that against him. You know what I mean? Like, Latarian would have got pole wrestle against anyone on that yeah. season, that, like for sure. So, oh, man, I just don't know who else to really go with, to be honest with you. No one inspires yeah. confidence, to be honest with you. But I'm gonna go with Ace. Stuff All it. Right. Do it. I'll see. See the. See the chat. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Drew. Um, this this may be my my biggest move for the draft. I honestly feel like you know convincing Kahuna to go for Ace. What? This moment might be the biggest move. <laughs> the what do you think? <laughs> Ace never goes deep, mate. Like he's constantly out in first place. He got um, to one final. He got to one he got, final. Yeah, he got to one he final. Got to a final. Yeah. But I listen. mean, we're running out of champions, right? There's like one left. Uh, I, I think Ace would have been at the bottom of my list, to be honest. Oh my but, gosh. <laughs> I thought there's no definitely... sabotage. <laughs> hey, all's fair in love and war. There was no rules that stated that I couldn't manipulate my fellow draft players. The thing is, I could see the smirk on Drew's face as soon as I started. He knew what was up. Drew, you knew what was up when I was doing this, right? I I actually you thought think he's that... The, you think he's going home? He's, he's the walker or the DQ or the walk-off or whatever it is? Most... Oh, I don't know if he's the DQ. He could, but I, I don't know. The thing is, is that it's <laughs> normally... <laughs> isn't going very far on a season um but he did make it to one final in inferno three which was quite a long time ago but he's normally the life of the party he normally has yeah. like some some cool confessionals or some fun confessionals and you never know what's going on like he was on the real world season real world paris with uh ct he was really close with ct at one point so you never know how that will translate to like 
if like say Kara talked to CT and was like, Hey, I heard Ace is gonna be on there. What can you tell me about Ace? And oh CT like says that he's a really cool guy, he's very genuine, he's down to earth kind of vibe. So I mean, you never know where he could <laughs> he could land. The good thing for Ace here is that Hazella is not on this season. That was his main downfall on All Stars One was Hazella on the season getting revenge on Ace. I don't think he has any but like any bones to pick with anybody here, so that's better for him. And I think because he played All Stars One and kind of got the vibe of the season just from his one episode, that maybe he'll get into a rhythm early here. But you never know. I mean, yeah. Kara could I easily just... bring him in and and be like, "Yeah, you'll be my guy," but he's got to win elimination. Is he? Yes. You see, Ace Ace is like. Casey, if Casey wasn't good at getting to finals consistently and ha- didn't win a championship. Oh, perfect then. Bo- boring, bland personality. I'm not going to give you any kind of points when it comes to that. I'm sorry, Chad. I know I, I accused you of sabotaging. It was all a part of the plan to get you off. <laughs> I feel, to I feel like <laughs> the rookie coming into the season of vets that gets you know <laughs> used and abused. This is and a different, she- like, Kuna's now, seeing, Kuna's now seeing a different level of competition. When it's Survivor, I just have fun with Here the drafts. Because we, cause we don't we don't know much of, like you said, Kuna, we don't know much about the players prior to a Survivor season. So I just have fun with it because it's really a gamble. When it comes to the challenge, there's more signs out there that you can you can follow the 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 trail to let you know yeah, where players are going to finish. The rest of the group is pretty garbage, to be honest with you. Like I don't know what, like how you. I don't know. I feel, I don't want to. I don't want to say. I don't want to say who I would have picked next. But there's definitely <laughs> two Above picks. Picked, yeah. <laughs> at least, at least, at least two picks for me that I would have picked. Maybe three. I would have picked the bar. Maybe. Yeah. But you know, I think the fact that that we still have a few there, it's, it's good. It's good. It's going to make the last round very, very I'm, interesting. I'm, but I'm top heavy. I'm carried by Marvin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it could have been worse, mate. I could have convinced you to pick Tyree. So you're in a good spot. <laughs> you're in a good spot. Uh, all right, let's go back to the draft. So give me a couple of names, everybody. Who do you want to pick between? So we've got Derek. Um, I could see Cyrus. Who else? Is that the only two you want to pick against? Uh, is anybody else? Tyree. Tyree. Okay. Uh, so, uh, that Lizzie person said uh, Adam as well, Adam like Adam, Adam, Derek, and Steve. You could pick one of those two. Okay, so at the moment I've got Derek, Cyrus, Tyree, and Adam. That's good. I think that's that good. good. That's a good. I think that's a good, good vibe. There's only like what five of them left, anyway. Six of them. Yeah. So here we go. Six. Vote now for the next male pick for Chantel's team between Derek, Cyrus, um, Tyree, and Adam. Very early start in favor of Derek here. Fifty percent in on Derek early on. That's what you get, Lizzie, for saying you were kidding about Tyree. You kid too much, and then you get your one spot burned by, by picking Tyree. Let him know, Drew. Let him know. This ain't joking around. You guys are against yeah. us. <laughs> we'll put two Tyrees next time. <laughs> All four of them, Tyree. You don't have a choice. <laughs> You're getting Tyree next. Um, so we've got 43% of people at the moment on Derek um, going, going, gone. And the vote is in. We have got Derek as the next pick drew thoughts on Derek being Chantel's next pick here for the guys. Yeah. I think it's a solid one. Uh, just by going by age, uh, most recently played. I mean, I was going kind of between Brandon and Derek a little bit. Um, I, I felt like I had to go with Derek because I felt like he had at least some built in numbers with knowing that he's close with Leroy and cam and Cara and Laurel rather than going with Derek who I'll be real. Derek and Brandon have a very similar like pathing that they've had on the challenge. Both haven't had the best uh, results, kind of had some bad luck on either, either side. Derek maybe have gone a little bit farther than Brandon on one season. He got it to like episode, I want to say eight or 11 on Battle of the Seasons 2012. Um, but that's the farthest he's ever made it past like episode three and two and stuff. So, I mean, not to say that he couldn't have gone far on any other season, but He's a good player. He's young. Um, hopefully he can go farther on this season. I feel like he can have a 
bit more like dramatic points than say Brandon possibly, but yeah. it's just, it's just one of those things where it's like the record, you have to look past the record and go with a vibe check on how you feel about it. And I guess with all stars, the vibe check is looking at age for some reason. It, it's a huge advantage on this on on a season like this than say like the main season it really does not matter because ct is out doing everybody on that season he's normally the one of the older competitors but when it comes to like all stars the 29 30 somethings are beating out the 50 somethings most of the time i'm gonna say majority well, of i them, think so. i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that ct has remained within the challenge world while he has aged so his yeah. body is still climatized to that where when you look at all stars you're getting people coming back who've now they're part-time reality tv competitive stars they're you know back in the real world doing desk jobs sitting in an office or doing things that's not as challenging you know so yeah. i feel like it's a, it's a tough comparison and and it's interesting to to see that finally you're agreeing and someone's agreeing with me that age does matter in all stars because that gap is just very very big for some people and they just can't adapt to it i don't know if i'm that high on derek but then again there isn't many people left at this point like i mean it's very difficult we're sort of getting to um the bottom end of some of the players that are left in the game i'm just a bit worried about him because like you said you should look past the record he he's not seen as someone that can clutch up he doesn't have the big match temperament when it comes to actually being in eliminations so that's my worry you know three losses one win um if he's in the right side of the numbers and seen as non-threatening maybe they want to drag him towards the end as someone that they think they can beat easily um i i just don't know how it's going to play out for him it's very 50 50 but it's it's a difficult spot right now to to um pick players and from memories he he is quite close with jasmine as well right like they're pretty so they've yeah, got that they're yeah. from the same real world season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so he's got he's got someone there with him. But yeah, I mean, she's not really going to help him either. But maybe yeah, there'll yeah. be some fun moments. <laughs> what I'm trying to get is maybe there'll be some fun moments, like you know, confession yeah, points, yeah. Points, I can see things that. like that between them. Yeah. Uh, Kahuna, thoughts on uh, the person that you should have picked, Derek? <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel so bad now because because just being so nice about the fact that I sabotaged you in the previous round, I actually do feel bad now. <laughs> the fact, well, I mean, the justifications that were given just then doesn't make me feel like any worse. I'm like, again, I, I do think from here on out, there's a little bit of a, a lottery uh, to it. Like, yeah, I think we, like you said, we've picked our, we've picked the winners, we've picked the people that are probably going to go far, and now we're picking middling fodder. Um, and you know, is my, is the 13th eliminations that much better than the 15th elimination, like, or, you know, the, or the first third person out that much better than the fourth person out, whatever it is. Like, I, I, I don't know what we're quabbling over here, uh, with if he's that much better. All right. Ace is probably right at the bottom based on what everyone said, but Derek <laughs> isn't like winning anything either. So I'm, you know, I'm okay. I'm, I don't know. I, I don't have a problem with Derek. She, she's got he's obviously very social because he's got strong friends but they're just not on this season i'm hoping like you said the age thing plays a big part in in that and i think he'll go decently far because again in a season where you've got very very top heavy big competitors that stand out and then probably a, a few others that are going to be really looked at as a bottom if he's not one of those bottom few then he might be able to skip through a few um episodes without being in danger you know what i mean because he's just inoffensive non-threatening you know fairly sociable he'll be okay lissy you're my rival this season i'm taking a screenshot of this and we're bringing this back up at the end of the season after jay has <laughs> won this season you're going to eat your words um jay is going to be oh the sleeper pick of the season um all right kahuna and drew we've got females next for chantal so mm. everybody tell me in the live who do you want to be in the vote? I've got Veronica so far, and I have got Ayana since she was a part of the previous um, poll. So I'm assuming you want her back in there. Who else do you want in this? Jasmine? Maybe? Give, give me some names. Flora? Okay, I mean, there's, Flora there's only there. four left. It's only four and left. Five left? No, no, five, four, four left. left. Four yeah, left. can you put all four on there? <laughs> <laughs> Because right. realistically, I would put Ayana, Veronica, and then if you can only put Flora three, Jasmine. it just doesn't matter. Yeah, J Jasmine or Flora. I mean, I think yeah. Ayana and Veronica are like the main ones. 
that people would be wanting. But yeah. All right, we've got the vote up, everybody. Get voting. Let's see. Oh, it's a interesting start. <coughs> Quite a bit of votes for all three of the ladies there. Oh, everybody's getting votes, so it's no blowout completely this time. Ayana is left off the poll. The is Jasmine the automatic bottom pick? Jasmine's in there. She's in the poll, and she's oh, second Jasmine's in the, in the poll. poll. Yeah, Laura she's is automatic. In Ayana's at 43%. It's actually quite fun seeing the, the poll go up and down here in the live chat as we're watching it. So let's see oh. um, where we're going to land. We've got Ayana and 43%. Veronica now at 23, and then Jasmine at 16, with Flora at 12. So uh, we're going to close off the poll very soon here. Going, going, gone. We've got Ayana. Leave my salad alone. Next in the pick <laughs> here for Chantal's team. And obviously, Kahuna. Talk to us about Ayana. I think she had one of the best TV, reality TV moments of all time a couple of seasons ago in All-Stars when she ate um jody salad in front of her and we had <laughs> players from other reality tv shows retweeting it on twitter um going crazy for that moment i think it was personally for me it was the most funny moment i've ever seen what do you think of ayana coming into the season could she be a blue chip pick here very late in the game somebody that um could really give i think chantelle and the the audience's team a lot of points yeah as far as drama goes for sure entertainment points She's great in that regard. That run she had, um, not only just for the funniness, but the elimination that she had where, like, mm. it was really dramatic, over, like, and she really kind of, like, they they got tears going. Like, people were, like, really inspired by her, her storyline there and, like, huge character. Um, didn't have as good a run on the second time around, but that first season, and I, I didn't remember her at the time from back in the day and i was like who like she's she's a whirlwind she was like if we're talking um tina was picked very high based on entertainment points ayana is is similar in that regard but maybe even more physically capable too especially in elimination so i like ayana i, I don't think she's a bad pick but against a stacked female cast when you when you're looking on the other side of that draft it, it obviously it makes sense that she's in the bottom half of it yeah, I think she's going to get a lot of points here for uh, Chantal's team, Drew, because she's just not somebody that's going to go quiet, right? Yeah, she's going to get the confessionals. She's going to be in some drama because she is like, so kind of like what we were talking about with, um, who was I talking about? Uh, Tina and then some other, um, uh, bringing in just the old school vibe. Kifla, I talked about bringing in the old school vibe. I mean, that's, Ayana stopped playing the challenge when it was still just personality and it was just, it was just, you're playing a game, but you're going to be your true authentic self and you're not going to play it up for the camera. I mean, she, she is a lot, but she's not like hamming it up. She's not making a moment to make a moment. She's not like Johnny bananas, bringing notes into the challenge house or house of villains house to get people riled up. She's going to eat a Greek salad if she sees a Greek salad and she's going to play up that moment because that's just her personality and that's how she's going to do it. And um, yeah, you're going to get some drama points. You can get some confessionals and heck we saw how good she is in eliminations and how strong she can be. And I'm intrigued to see how, what she can do coming mm. back onto the season. Um, it's this draft so, is it's shaping so, up so good. Like I've just so, got to say, I just got to say drew like this draft yeah. is shaping up so good. I reckon looking at Chantel's team right now, that legitimately to me looks like a team that Chantel would have picked if she was here. Like, I feel like they're really in mm -hmm. tune with her and she's going to be pretty proud of like the team that all of you have picked for her. Like, um, I know I've been mean to the chat a few times today saying they're sabotaging <laughs> us, all this kind of stuff, but I just want to give them credit. They're doing a bloody good job. And I think they're making it an interesting competition in the draft here. I don't know. I don't think she would have picked uh, Kifla. I think she would have. Uh, she picked Steve quite early on in our original draft. So I mean, Steve is still down there on the board, everybody. So I mean, I'm just gonna say <laughs> it. I probably would have gotten Kifla if, if Chantel was here. She would have picked Steve, <laughs> and we would have been off on our way. She'd have been up in the arms with the hand model. Very but cool. it's interesting that Ayana uh, Kahuna brought up that Ayana's down here one of the last like few women left here to be picked. I mean, she was actually a sabotage uh, in our original trio draft, which I find very, very interesting. interesting as well. Mm. Yeah. We, we had Willie ask if it's the sabotage round and no, there is no sabotage. There's been enough curveballs thrown at us in this draft. <laughs> we've, had, we've had the wheel determine who's going to go first. 
yeah, we've had the wheel determine who was going to go first. We had um, the wheel determine if it was male or female. And then I've already sabotaged, um, you know, Kahuna to a certain degree. And he self-sabotaged himself by picking Ace in this last <laughs> round. But um, no, nah, it's all fun. I think it's the draft shaping up really nicely. I'm actually really liking how these teams are coming together. Um, both myself and Drew have got some of our previous. So we're like 50-50, I think, both of our teams. Like 50% of what we did before and 50%. Yeah. new people that are coming into the draft which is going to make it interesting and different <laughs> compared to the previous draft obviously the biggest travesty is that i didn't get to pick cara maria this time around like and that's why in my heart the other draft is the one that truly matters because that's the one where i've got cara maria in my draft but um anyways kahuna over to you on this next pick which female are you going to be picking into your team well based on what's left i think it's pretty a simple choice and i get to make up for the ace pick but like Chris said here, a three-time champion going in the last round is actually insane. I'm going Veronica. She is a three-time champion, has not had a great showing in recent times, but she is still a three-time champion, and she's still Veronica, and she's still considering what's left on the board. I think it's a pretty good pick. Yeah, no, <laughs> listen, and I just want to put it out there. She's recently played on the main show which yes. you have to give her credit for the fact that she's been kicking it with the younger kids on a different show. She did end up doing reasonably well in that season. She's battle-hardened, I think, compared to a lot of other people that are coming back out of the cold. So, um, And the fact that we're literally picking our last picks here. Um, yeah, you, you didn't want to disrespect her by having her go last, I think, in this draft. So... Uh, overall, not a not a bad choice here. The only problem I do see when it comes to the balance of your draft, though, Kahuna, is that you've got two people from the same alliance there, and Rachel and Veronica. So if that alliance does go down, you may have back to back losses there, where it cuts into your numbers early on in the game. Like if it went down, or, or it could be upside. Yeah. yeah, it could be upside as well. Drew, thoughts on Veronica? Yeah, uh, I was hoping praying that veronica could fall to me uh definitely was not having my hopes high with the <laughs> flora and jasmine being uh left beside her but yeah three-time champion you can't you can't deny what she was able to do on all-stars three i feel like veronica is more apt for all-stars than like the modern era of the challenge it's kind of like again what we were talking about when you kind of revert back to the old time of the of the challenge when you get in there and veronica was the politician she was the person that was stirring up drama as well as conducting what the storylines and everything should be so i and we saw that kind of like in all stars three she was doing a great job uh the only thing i will say is that my worry is that if you could be disqualified for just tripping on the stairs and breaking your toe uh, I worry. I worry about what you can do in an actual physical elimination. So, um, yeah, I would still want that three-time champion to be on my side. The Bean Girls Alliance kind of built in to your just baseline numbers coming into the game. But, yeah, I, I, I totally understand where you're coming from with picking Veronica. And I would I would have liked to have had her on, on my team. Well, you've got to make a choice now, I guess, basically for both of us because whoever you choose will be my pick automatically the other person will be my pick automatically so uh where are you going with this one so i said i was trying to come into the game with a strategy of not picking players that i've already picked and mm. when looking at our trio draft i have flora she was a, a sabotage i will say but flora i picked uh flora was chosen for me and uh, Jasmine is not currently on my team. So, I mean, if I want to go with my strategy, Jasmine is there. She is coming in with Derek. She d is dramatic. We all know that. But you know what? This game is all about risk. And I can't let Ooh. my girl from Miami, real world Miami, I can't leave a, a Miamian down on the floor. I don't think she's from Miami, but she was on the real world <laughs> Miami. And... Uh, I'm just going to pick Flora. Could she go out like she did her real world Miami castmate uh, Cynthia did on all stars three. Yeah. She could be sent in directly into the first elimination, be eliminated by Tina and, uh, and then be gone. But guess what? I don't think Jasmine's going to be lasting very much longer past episodes one through three. I mean, we're down to the last two picks. Uh, mm. I think Flora could be a wild card. 
she can she's gonna be her true authentic self i think she's gonna have some fun confessionals i think she could get into some drama and i would rather go with flora who i don't know what to expect from than know what i'm getting with jasmine where at the first inch inkling of an elimination you know she she should just pack up her stuff and just get into a truck and go home because there's no way she's gonna win it i'm sorry she's just not gonna do it and yeah she was a simulation queen she she won like three eliminations when we did a simulation on my bakery after hours uh live stream simulation so i'm going for you're, you're you're the stats guy drew um she's not been on the challenge for 22 years is this nope. the longest stint that anyone has gone since they've come back i it's it's close i think it would be very very close if not if if it's not i think it yeah. would be really really close i mean she was 30 the last time she played this game she's oh, 52 now 52. wow yeah yeah and that is she, insane. there was a lot of things of how she was like banned because at the real world 10 year reunion, she was getting castmates, like gathering castmates, trying to tell them like, we should hold out for more money. Like we should not go out on stage to do it because she was right. mean, back, yeah, she was, she was completely ahead of her time. And then they basically mm. edited her out of her one and only challenge season. And then basically was like, we're never going to call her again. She's, she's, she's too much. She's too much for us to handle. We can't let people know that they can be paid more to be on TV. These college <laughs> kids need to eat beans, drink a ton of beer and be paid 50 cents an hour on this thing. Wow. Um, but yeah, Kefla, I'm, I'm hoping, Kefla's I'm 25 it. years since he's last played. I just had a look. So yeah, yeah. you're right. Lissy Kefla's the longest, which is insane yeah. to me that, you know, this is like a lifetime ago. These people are not going to be, the same you'd think like coming in to play this game they're like whole different human beings coming back to play this game but yeah I, I don't have much to say um on flora like i don't really know her it's a season that i'm not that like i'm not familiar with it at all so i don't know what to expect um i'm happy with jasmine falling to me i know she's definitely not going to win the game i know if she goes into an elimination it is a done deal like you said so i'm just hoping she gets uh you know gets past like one or two rounds maybe i get her for three episodes and she brings a lot of drama and excitement in that way that's kind of what i'm hoping for with jasmine so i get some points but um heading into the last round here we do need to pick the remaining men and we've got an extra person here because we don't know who they're going to replace are we just going to keep cyrus out would that be the way to go? And then he just automatically gets replaced or how does it work? Yeah. I think we should let, let everybody be up there. If, if okay, let Cyrus be chosen by anybody, if they want to choose, choose them. And then if somebody leaves, we can decide on whoever's last can be sent in if they're still in the game, but that's the risk okay. you take. I think that's the risk you yeah. take. If you decide to go with Cyrus and hold out for a couple of episodes or an episode or three episodes, whatever, however long, and then he gets thrown in there, but you never know how long he's going to last in there. But I, I think it would be very interesting. Jeez, I actually don't know where I'm going to go with this one, to be honest. Um, there's two I champs in there. There's two yeah. champs left. There's two there's, there's two champs left, for sure, for sure. Um, it just makes me wonder, like, okay. I don't normally do this. I don't normally go for someone that's been out of the game for as long as they have been. Um, but I know that there's someone that some have been high on. Actually, even early on, I has, had some people call out his name. I'm going to go with Adam for this last one as a previous champion. Um, again, like I said, I, I don't know what to expect. He hasn't actually been playing this game since, I think, Gauntlet 2 um one elimination was a loss so you can't go off much with that um he may just come back and have that likable quality to him in the game where people are just gonna want to be playing the game with him like he's not gonna be a threat he hasn't played recently i think there are, there's other people that i just i'm not gonna take the risk on cyrus and i was thinking about steve i was thinking about going to the hand model the, the hand model to see if how he would do he's a big guy potentially could do extremely well in some of the eliminations and things like that but yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go with a champion i do need a champion in my team um like i don't really have champions <laughs> when i look at it right now i've gone for a lot of other players so let's let's go towards the statistic on this one uh drew thoughts on adam coming back to play this game i, I mean huge question mark uh honestly i i don't know what to expect from him 
there is some stuff in the rumor mill. You know, I don't know if oh, it's really? going to be shown or not because uh, let's just say some things that are being alluded to and rumored about for All Stars Four weren't shown on the Challenge Thirty Nine in recent seasons. So I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, I'm not going to. I'm not. This is what the crazy thing is about, like picking and hoping for people that are going to be more dramatic and everything. Cause you never know what they're going to show and tiptoe around and be like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to show that fight. I mean, freaking Emmanuel had like four hookups on that season and they, we didn't, he got zero. He got zero yeah. kiss points. I looked, I, he was on my team. I needed every point I could scrounge. <laughs> I was going to even do like a like, <laughs> kiss on the cheek. I would have been like, you're done. I'm getting you, man. I'm getting you. I'm going to give myself a point. Could never. <laughs> The dude was like, I yeah, I did it. Other women were like, yeah, he did it, but nothing. We we caught nothing until the reunion. Screw you. Anyways, this is on Paramount Plus. Hopefully, it's different. Um, but yeah, I think Adam's fine. I, I didn't like him in his past seasons during the rewatch for Patreon, and um, but he is a champion, and he looks to be in good shape. So yeah, he's just another yeah. question mark. Okay, well, got another question mark on my team there. Like didn't Jay. go for the obvious one. I wanted to go somewhere I think where I wouldn't normally go what if this last fight see see how it plays out um playing with house money at the moment when it comes to drafts so um let's see how it plays out overall but going over to you Drew for this next one who are you choosing for your next pick I don't know uh I don't here's the thing I feel like I my mind is kind of getting rotted by how much uh, uh, points and like the videos that I'm making because to me, I was very surprised by one person's stats compared to the other people's stats on here. Um, Tyree, y'all can fight over him. I'm I'm not picking him. Uh, yeah. Cyrus, uh, as an alternate, he scares me. Beth is not on this season. I don't know how connected he is. He's looking in great shape. He's a new father, but as an alternate, it just puts an easy target on you if you don't win early and make those connections that, hey, you just came in. New in, you can be the first out. So we're going to send you into elimination. So it really is down to Ryan and Steve. One per like two people is just like, they're fine. You know, Um, I actually think Ryan has some really decent stats for when he played back in the day. Don't like his tic-tac-toe abilities. I think Steve is in better shape, but I also think that Steve just sucks. You know, I just (laughs) think that, uh, (laughs) he had an alliance and then when somebody was like hey who do you want to go up against he's like i want to go up against that my person in my alliance and i want to be the complete pariah of my the whole house because (laughs) nobody can trust me um and he's coming in with like zero connections he had katie on his first season back he won a trivia challenge and then he just made all the blubbering idiot moves on the season i hate to be like this frustrated with him but he's like bottom three for the guys for me and ryan's like bottom four um <laughs> so i uh, you know what i'm i'm gonna he, he got rid of Derek. okay so he voted for Derek. Uh, <laughs> I, uh i i don't care for either one of these two i almost want to do like a uh can we put up the random wheel g- thing and just do a random wheel for Ryan <laughs> or Steve. I just uh let's just do it. You know, first yeah, we're just okay. getting random on here. I just don't I just don't. People I are saying take this. Steve. I don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't trust him. I will say he may win an elimination possibly, but to me it, he's going to have to win multiple eliminations in in my opinion. So if it if it falls on Steve, I think I'm I'm still gonna go with Ryan. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'll take Ryan. <laughs> I almost went back on it. I was like, oh my gosh, am I gonna have another regret? I don't care. I'll, I'll take Ryan. I'll take Ryan. He actually has like a three to four elimination record where he's won three, lost four. Um, he's made it very far in multiple seasons. He uh, almost made the final in Fresh Me Two with Teresa. He almost made it to the final another season he made the final on the island and he just like gets far and then he gets cut down here and there to me i'm i'm going with like maybe him and Derek have like this alliance with each other they were on all stars 2 together maybe he's gotten some good pointers with some of the other people he was on fresh me too with laurel and cara that was his last main season on the challenge so 
maybe he bulked up. Maybe he got ready to play the game. You never know. He played once. Maybe he'll come back better. So I'm a, I'm a big Ryan. I'm cool with it. Great. Okay. So you've got Ryan. Um, not much that I can add. I think he kind of um, delivered the pros and cons to both of them. I'm kind of more curious where Kahuna is going to go. Kahuna, w- what are you doing with your next choice? After you've pretty much heard the pros and cons to <laughs> both Ryan and Steve, and then also why Cyrus <laughs> at the stage wasn't considered. And yeah. obviously you've got the super athlete Tyrese still on the board as well that you could always go for. He's completely out of the equation for everyone though. Like every like fighting over leaving him as the potential last choice. Tyree based off of Drew's uh knowledge and experience, he he's not a pick for me either. Um actually it's an easy pick for me, even though I don't think there's any like you know, one's so much better than the other here, but I'm I have to go for the half Asian with long hair. Uh, that's gone in his 40s, decided to do a man bun and grow it out. Like, you know, how can, how can I not? I'll take that. Um, you're going to have to let your hair you're gonna have to let your man, hair you know? Loose. Yeah. You're going to have to let your hair loose while you're watching him on the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, I don't know how, like, there's no, yeah, like, we're just picking based off colors yeah. now. Like, Drew literally did a wheel choice. <laughs> and i almost That's regretted right. it yeah. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> uh, the chat chat likes it chat chat saying good choice to kuna so um i guess we should put it up for a vote for this last one to see who chat's gonna go for um we'll go let's have a look yeah let's go i will Start say poll. that i i do think that steve is better than i definitely think he's better he he's definitely somebody that I would have chosen over Cyrus or Tyree. Um, I I think that Cyrus is a challenge champ and he's looking in better shape. It's just him being an alternate kind of scares me as somebody who has watched the challenge and people just like to, Oh, you're, you, you're coming in late. Uh, We're going to have to test you early because if you come in late and we've already been here since day one, uh, you're going to have to earn your place here kind of vibe. So, and he's kind of faltered roughly around here so i mean you never know i'm rooting for cyrus but you you just never know Mm. we're sitting on 13 votes so far cyrus sitting at 69 percent and tyree at 31 percent so uh it doesn't look like the polls moving all that much at the moment either uh so we're gonna lock it out in three three two one and cyrus it is i don't think it's a big surprise to any of us i think if they did go um with Tyree would have been hilarious because Tyree was my sabotage on Chantal in our original <laughs> draft. And it would have been funny to see her get Tyree again, but they're not <laughs> going to do her dirty like that. Um, and they're going to keep it serious here and, and go for Cyrus, which Cyrus is a big question mark coming into the season. He's not playing with a lot of the OGs that he played with in his previous all-star seasons that there was like some sort of a camaraderie there. I do really vibe with cyrus though like as a human being like he's just old school has that old school graft <laughs> hard work hard kind of mentality which i really enjoy um obviously being a champion himself like you said uh having played in three of the all-stars this was his third all-star season that he would have played in for all-stars mm-hmm. four so two prior to this uh one win uh two losses and eliminations for all-stars and then also one win and two losses for eliminations in his actual main challenge career so um yeah, don't know what to expect from him. I just hope we get good TV, if nothing else. I hope we get good TV from him, that he gets um, some points for the audience and for Chantel in that way. But overall, I'm actually quite, um, I'm enjoying this draft. It didn't work out completely like our previous one. There, there are some changes to it, which is good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the only ones that really come across is like Kifla going in the, the the first round of the men where he was one of the last ones picked. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's really it. Everything else has not really changed in the in the year or the trailer or seeing the cast photos and updated versions of everybody. It really hasn't changed all that much. It looks a little bit different because of, of the four people. And so it's a little bit uh, slightly out of order, but. Honestly, it's not that crazy off balance. Or yeah, that really was the that original. That uh, was the Avery original. Two. Avery 2 also jumped up quite a bit for me because of of the just the questionability and everything. So I would say that Avery and um, Keefla jumped up quite a bit. But 
other than that, everybody pretty much stayed roughly around the mm. same same goal, same area. So just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea, um, Kahuna, Ace was a sabotage that was placed on me it's last time. Enough. So I had to I had to <laughs> share the love this uh, this time around and try and sabotage you with that pick or allow for you to sabotage yourself. Uh, Tyree was a sabotage. Derek was a sabotage. And then Flora, Ayana, and Jasmine were also all sabotages that week. The last picks last time around was Veronica, Tina, and Avery. All of them had some good climb. I feel like it was a decent climb from the previous one, but maybe a lot of that came down to the fact that we had a sabotage. Right, sabotage, Drew? yeah. Honestly, you know what would have been really funny is if Chris and I wore the exact same outfit that we did in this draft, and you pulled it up because Kuna looks exactly like the same outfit that Chantel's wearing. So that would have been really funny if I was in my Sailor Moon hoodie. And then, uh, we should have definitely so planned ahead. We did not plan ahead for this. <laughs> Um, yeah, very interesting draft. Lots of fun to talk to both of you guys about the season. So, uh, Drew, how's it going to work this season? Are you going to just keep points like on both of them and we're going to sort of have a OG draft and then the, the draft for the four of us? Yeah, it'll go it'll go basically the same way. Uh, it'll pull from the same points. It'll be the same same system, same format. So, I mean, we're just basically going to have just two concurrent drafts going at the same time so it's just going to go the same way it's just going to look a little different because the teams are just slightly smaller and we'll just have two types of results to go by if i jumped on your guys's live uh once once in a while during all stars four and we can do yeah. a couple of uh reassessments and some updates on the on the all stars four draft i'll i'll give both i'll give both infos of both drafts and everything but yeah it'll yeah. run exactly concurrently i just got to connect every everybody and all their stuff uh it's it's on this page as well so we did the original draft a year ago before <laughs> we even like we just knew we knew the cast but we January. like the season didn't even play out yet so we were just like let's just do it let's so everybody can know that 100% we don't know what the result is. We're just picking a draft, you know, without even knowing the outcome of it yet. But then we decided, you know what, let's, it's been a year. Like maybe our thoughts have changed, which it feels, in, you know, in hindsight, on a few people it did. But a lot of the top people have kind of remained in the top, especially those first two rows, I think, have been pretty solid if we look at that. But, you know, overall, it was just fun seeing them in the cast photos. It, it looks just a little bit more different and professional you know compared to what we had previously which is just <laughs> photos from the instagram or wherever we could find it that we put put together um and we also had kahuna on this one which was obviously a little bit different so i am um, the sabotage i'm the sabotage this season 100 <laughs> percent. you 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 definitely <laughs> came in as the new kid on the block and i think it was a lot of fun to see you react to it and um it's going to be fun to see if you can keep that unbeaten record that you have in drafts kahuna i'm not uh, feeling confident you, to be honest with you you've, you've i am in my your... top half but the second yeah. half i'm like yeah I mean, that's every draft, basically. Yeah. But a lot of people yeah. on the chat said that they really like your team uh, mm. over everybody else's. So I yeah, think uh, I saw the, that. I think the I think I think it is the yeah. top heavy of yeah. Cara, Tony, and uh, Rachel that helps mm. out quite a bit. But also, you got uh, Veronica, and I think people think that Steve is one of the better out of the last four guys that could have last five guys that could have been chosen. So I think I don't. I just, I think we all got solid teams. I think I think, I think it's I'll, balanced. I'll be real. Chris and I, I like have these. a lot of question marks. Let's be real. Mm. I think mm. I think Chris and I took the most right, risks. Chris. And I think that uh that should that should stand for something. I think that should yeah. I think that should be applauded. You know, we don't yeah, know what we can do. We yeah. don't know what Flora is gonna do. We don't know what Jay and Adam, who are basically the same person, gonna do. You know, <laughs> they, they, they all got weird situations but i think that should be applauded that we didn't yeah. just go some of the chalk chalk answers like pick and stuff. i reckon i reckon we're both <laughs> somewhat <laughs> i think we're like both you know, a little bit of we're, we're mavericks you know we don't follow the beaten path we we go down our own direction before we yeah. think, you know yeah. and when we lose all of our players in the first six episodes i mean at least the risk we took you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly um now this has been so much fun and obviously drew like we said previously you're always welcome on the podcast we're going to be recapping and going live every week to talk about uh, all
all stars action here on the Nullify Take channel, um, and it should replace the the normal spot that we do for Survivor, which I think it's like six or seven p.m. Uh, I'll have to double check because when daylight savings kick in, it might move from six to seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday evenings. But um, yeah, like I said, you know, whenever you want to jump on, obviously I know you're really busy with your channel. You're doing a lot on your channel and we'll give you an opportunity to talk about what's happening there. But whenever you want to jump on and just chat some some all-stars, you're more than welcome to jump on. Uh, now that we have that consistent slot, you'll know when we do it. Um, but tell people, tell people a little bit about what's happening on your channel and what you're doing at the moment. Uh, on the channel so far, we're kind of taking it a little bit light uh or we have been taking it a little bit lighter on march i mean not light on the patreon i've been going pretty deep on the patreon doing like three videos a week for the five dollar tier patrons and then uh i've been doing some lives i we did the challenge 40 video i thought that was going to be good enough uh for the to wrap up with march for our main video but coming up in april we're just gonna be hitting the ground running i mean we're gonna be uh i found out on april 10th of this year uh the exact date is when uh, free agent season 25 premiered. So wow. I'm going to be doing a 10 year retrospective on the 25. What did it mean in the terms of the challenge? How did everything change from that season and looking back on that season, how it was received back then to how we view it now and how mm. pivotal it really was and kind of do like a love letter to free agents uh, a bit. That's going to be on the main channel. Um, hopefully next week. Um, I don't want to give out any spoilers just in case if people are watching it, but uh, it was spoiled for me. But on the Patreon, I'll be doing a $5 tier Patreon video of Traders Season 2 and how good slash how like uh, doing a breakdown of how some people won that season and what uh, what led to them. And I'm going to be taking some very detailed notes. I don't know how long that video is going to be. It could be like 20 minutes. It could be like a full hour, uh, but I haven't watched any of it. I watched like the first oh, episode wow. and I got spoiled for me and I was like, cool, I'll check it out. And then lovable Nikki gave me a really great idea to just do a breakdown of how that whole season went down and like the different decisions and how all of it went down. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a movie night next week on the Patreon and a game night sometime in all stars. We're going to be doing Jackbox games and challenge stuff and everything. So nice. I mean, we're going to be leading into all stars where then we're going to be doing weekly tiny table talks on Saturday nights and uh, just a ton of videos coming out. Are you the one scandal? We'll, I'll be making a video on that as well as a ton of other like challenge videos and everything over there, as well as doing some stuff for the YouTube channel. Of course, uh, I just don't have all that like pressed out. I don't like press that out as much uh, in the near future, but there's going to be a ton of content starting starting the first week of April, basically, and just going far. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure to subscribe to Angel Cake Entertainment on YouTube, where you can stay up to date and informed about all of the content that's going to be dropping on that channel. And then if you you know, have it. And if you've got the ability to support him in any way and you want to jump onto Patreon, which both myself and Kahuna are part of his Patreon as well. I've been a part of the Patreon, I feel like, for pretty much since his inception. So it must be like two years at least. Um, it's continued to grow uh, a lot. And there is so much behind the scenes content that Drew uh, does give to people who are part of the Patreon and also the community there. It's just a fun community that share a lot. And it's they talk about a lot more than just the challenge, by the way. There's like Survivor, mm -hmm. Amazing Race, Big Brother uh, channels there that, cool. you, you know, if you just want to talk to like like-minded people you can you can jump on there and and have a chat with people in the patreon it's a great community um on our channel uh here on the nullify tag channel myself and kahuna will be back tomorrow um it'll be tomorrow morning our time tomorrow evening your time uh it is already pre-scheduled for us to go live to talk about the latest episode of survivor 46 we just did an interview with aileen from australian survivor last night it was a lot of fun we've had ferris and mark on the channel from australian survivor we also will have eden porter um on our channel from australian survivor this coming week so uh expect more and more content for australian survivor to also drop as we get more and more interviews uh coming at us basically at the end of the season as we conclude Australia Survivor Titans versus Rebels, which in my mind was one of the best seasons we've seen of any Survivor season 
globally. Um, so a really, really great season to cover. Uh, plenty of content coming up. All Stars is going to come up. We definitely at some point will talk about the Challenge 40, the cast. I'll see if we can get Drew and Chantel back for that as well. Um, and uh, for now, that's really it. So please, if you um, are still... 50 50 on if you want to subscribe and you got to this part of the video i hope we earned your subscription tonight it would be much appreciated if you could hit the subscribe button it helps with our credibility so we can bring more fun guests onto the channel in the future hit the like button put the notification bell on uh, so you can be informed the next time that we go live and Everybody in the live that helps Chantel tonight, we really appreciate the participation. We really appreciate all the questions. We couldn't bring up as many as we would normally like to do because obviously when you're doing a draft, there's a lot to talk about and go through. That's why we do these two-hour videos, but we do it because we love it. And thank you so much for being a part of the TNT fam here. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye.